Hey, you guys. We're back. The Hateful Geeks are back in town, and I'm not in Indianapolis anymore. We're going to be on a special show for you this week, guys. It's part two to top fives. We're bringing it back. The sequel's always better than the original. Right, Andy? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get swifty, everybody. I'm Phil. This is Sweeney. I'm Andy. And this is Tim. And tonight, we're going to be doing another top five segment. We've all got some pretty decent top fives for you. Uh, and I'm going to start it off tonight. I am talking about the top five most overrated comic book characters of all time. And I'd like to open up the floor. And I just want to talk to you guys a little bit. Like we all have like our beloved comic book characters. We've all got like everyone here's got our favorite. Uh, but but I, I think that there's a lot that are really popular in in the in the world and pop culture that have no friggin' be business being popular. They're completely ridiculous characters, or they're completely just obnoxious or super just overrated by their fan base. And if there are people actually took like a critical look at some of these people, they realize that they're. Complete their fate is super misplaced. People look at critical bet people. Yeah, you know, critical characters. Why are you gonna why are you gonna why are you gonna wax semantics with me? Asshole? Uh, grammar. You're not a good person. I know. All right. Well, you know who else isn't a good person? <laughs> My number five isn't a good person. Who is that? So I think the Hulk. The Hulk is a beloved comic book character. And, and for good reason. Uh, well, I, I, I can't think of one. This is literally a kid. Don't get me wrong, Stanley, you know, you're you're great or something, but this is a character that is a hardcore <laughs> ripoff. Wait, did you just pick on Stan Lee? Well, he made the Hulk. Oh, he's greater, blah, blah, blah. Like, that, that just made me stop for a second. <laughs> what? Or blah, blah, blah. blah. Last week, look, man, he look. created, like, almost every single iconic you hero in Marvel. stole every iconic Everything Marvel Everything is stolen. Character. George Lucas stole mythology to create Star Wars. Everything's stolen. Look, man, all right. So the Hulk is a character. We all, we're all, I think for those of us out there who aren't familiar with the Hulk, if you're not, I don't know what, what's Get wrong with you. the show. Seriously. <laughs> but the series, okay, so this is a character who was a scientist who got hit with gamma radiation. Now whenever he gets a little, throws a little temper tantrum, he turns into a big green. Indestructible, unkillable, no... The amount of like so writing or retconning can like un- the power kill him. I want. It's the yeah. ultimate power. The the greatest like he's got anger issues. Anger man. Yeah, a couple but, hours of therapy and it'll be fine. Yeah, but, That's the cure to the Hulk. And therapy. he's tried to do that. And also the Hulk is also serves kind of like a metaphorical thing too because it's always saving him. You know who did it first? Uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister no, Hyde. No, no, no. This is a straight Hyde's ripoff different. of a classical character. That's completely different. Well, you mean it's a scientist who used this experiment no, and now he becomes a hulking monster? Hmm. I'm talking about those. The relationship between the two. Uh, I don't know what you're. What do you would explain yourself? The two personalities. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde is severely like one psychopathic, like he's a psychopath, and one is like good. The Hulk literally saves Banner. He works to save himself over and over again, and the people he trusts and love. Right, love. The Hulk like destroys entire cities just by farting in the wind. He, like, and he and he literally like I know it's, I know it's the movie sometimes that, that they say this, but it's, it's obvious. It's obvious like he's shot himself because of all this, the the destruction he's caused, and the Hulk literally stops it. Like, yeah. The fact me. that's that, that you're yawning that it's still a good. He is a two dimensional character. He is a character who's not he's a scientist. He's he, a genius. He, he's he is so boring and and he, oh super strength. We get it. I can't be killed by anything. Like bo- that's just so fucking boring. Your favorite hero is Superman. Yeah, we're not talking. He's not on my list. <laughs> Literally the same thing. We're not talking he about is, that. Is, hey, isn't it cool to you get any power strength. you can come up I can't with? Be killed. Kryptonite can kill him. No, it can't. So Doomsday, not with the Doomsday, yellow sun. Doomsday did kill him. Not with the yellow he sun. Didn't die. Yeah, you guys are idiots. So we're just gonna leave it <laughs> he did not die. Look, all right. So I, look, what do you love about the Hulk, then, like Andy? What's like? I know you're a big Hulk fan. What, what do you possibly like about the Hulk? I just like that concept of he could. You like that he gets so fucking mad yeah, that he, he breaks gets shit. So pissed, he gets so angry. You need therapy, and too. that once he loses it, he becomes this creature that. Does he transforms to either protect Banner or protect the people that he actually trusts? And the fact that he is nearly unstoppable, the fact that he could jump so high, he could go in the stratosphere, he could just destroy physical, 
pure destruction just by being the Hulk. And I'm just like, I want that. Not to mention, he's the, he can rival gods. In, in this universe, if you don't have something that can rival a god, then the big main, big main villains don't matter. All right. I, I, okay, so the entire mythos around the Hulk itself is just has just jumped the shark numerous times. Let's talk about Gray Hulk. Let's talk. That's how he started. Uh, that's the one because of uh, color printing problems back in the times <laughs> they invented the Hulk and that that the, those comics were being made. He was originally supposed to be green in mind, but he was gray because of how it came out when they printed the books. But yes, the originally was Green Hulk. Then there was like the Gray Hulk version, which was like a more sentient, less der- derpy Hulk. Where he like had, could actually like I don't know drive a car or do something. So you're complaining like a business story. He became a mob hitman. Became a mob hitman. Like, a mob hit man. like the Hulk. It. The Hulk <laughs> became a mob hitman. Like give me a goddamn break, man. This is a two dimensional. Every character, doctor, every I, comic book character or a comic book has jumped the shark at some. Point. Every book, every, every series, every hero. I like the Hulk has. Yes, blue and red Superman. World War Hulk. <laughs> World War Hulk. That's a great story. Nah. It's a great. It's a great premise, but it had a crappy ending. Oh, yeah, the ending sucks because um, yeah. they bring the century. Like, 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 Bruce Banner interests me far more than... That's what I'm saying. Oh, you you have that other side. Yeah. You have a genius-level person that contributes more than just his Hulk out smash. But, but that being said, like, Hulk's never been, like, a favorite of mine. Um, but, like... You know, like you, you brought that comparison to super to Superman, and like they, they are like the same, but like you don't get that aspect in, of like family that he that Superman has now with Lois and John that you get with Hulk, with Hulk yeah, just Kara, Kara. Or his cousin. Superman, yeah. Superman is. Yeah, I, we're not talking about that, Superman. No, Stay on target, I'm saying how comparable. Superman has that human element to him, where right. he's always like this. He, so it's cool that he's like a human that has all these awesome powers where the Hulk, that element taps into like our animal side. Like right. it's just pure rage and just, do you think like, that's a healthy, uh, like, you know, it's message to be sending to people. Like it's okay. Just rage out and break some shit. It'll solve your no, problems. That's how we've all done it. We, uh, I have, you have no proof of that. <laughs> that I have done that. And if I you do, you then told me, you told me a story of headphones and a controller. You both broke. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, that might've happened. It didn't happen. Maybe though. You have no proof. Anyway, <laughs> you're saying, sir. All right. So we can all agree then the Hulk is super overrated and dumb. Great, awesome. Moving on to my number four, <laughs> um, Spawn. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Spawn, Spawn is a Todd McFarlane property from the mid to late nineties. Uh, the premise is, uh, uh, was, I'll give him this. Uh, Spawn was one of the first African African American uh, comic book heroes, and that's why he hates it. <laughs> no, <laughs> whoa, whoa, dude, whoa, 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 whoa. No. Okay. I didn't know we lived in. Charles. I'm talking about some of the positive oh. things. Whoa. Need to get cut. Too soon. Too soon. Um, I'm talking about one of the positive things about Spawn. Like, so he was, well, he had some things that were very progressive about him. And this concept, though, is so he's a, he's a ex mercenary assassin hitman who dies and goes to hell. And the their version of the devil, the male bulge, that male bulge is literally how you pronounce this. Like for God's sake, Todd McFarlane <laughs> makes him. Uh, a, a lieutenant in his army, a hell spawn, and he sends him back to Earth to do his bidding and wait there. And he's got a time limit so he can see his wife and kid, and not his kid anymore, who his best friend marries. It just goes in this ridiculous, convoluted story. But the the art was probably the only saving grace of this comic book. The, Todd McFarlane gets really pretentious in like his like heaven versus hell, and is Spawn even a good person? He's not. Spawn is super not a good person, which is kind of his appeal, I think, to some people. But this is a comic book that spawned one of the worst films of all time. I love the film. <sighs> and it sounds to me you're more upset with the story than you are the actual hero. I mean, no, I'm actually upset with Spawn himself. Because he's a great, all the powers he has is awesome. Well, don't, okay, so cool, like hell magic, I get it. But there's a part in the story where he like literally becomes the new king of hell. And just says screw it and like walks away. Like you couldn't make again, yourself human again. Story, and, like, like move along. Like the, I think there's a huge fan base behind Spawn, which really hasn't. Like, why? I, I'd love. If, anyway, okay, you are obviously a Spawn I, fan. No, I'm, why I, are you a Spawn I, fan? I like Spawn the character. Why? Because of the premise of this being that is again a human who faced hell, got out of it, and yes, He's selling got, his soul to the devil. Yes, he did, but for a reason to come back and take care of people that killed him. If you had a chance, if someone, if you if you got killed mm-hmm. by mobsters, probably not. Whatever, you're Italian, close Maybe, enough. Possibly, you got killed by mobsters and God or the devil, whoever. 
whomever. I'm going to heaven. I'm just going to throw that out there. Said, okay, I can send you back with powers. Sure. And you have to do something for me, but you get a chance to also take out the people that did something to you. Anybody in this room would do it. Do I have to wear disgusting spandex with a big M on my chest? With a cape that thinks for itself? It wasn't spandex. Do I, have to look like a, do I have to look like a crispy critter underneath my costume? It wasn't a spandex. It was actually armor that built itself onto him. Oh, God. That's another thing. Spawns a ripoff of Venom, which Todd McFarlane helped draw when he first showed up. Right. It is. I will agree. It is a little bit of a ripoff of Venom. He, is, sense that fucking, a he is fucking Ghost Rider with a symbiote suit. That is Spawn. That's He's Ghost back. Rider with a symbiote suit. And when Venom took over Ghost Rider? <laughs> All right. So... I actually agree with you on this one. Get the fuck out of here. I love the look of Spawn. I love how he looks. I like how the cape looks. I like how it flows. I like all that. But as a character, eh. And Dr. Strange can picture himself, too. I think eh. Todd McFarlane is, is great a great artist. visual artist. But you put a pen in his hand, and you start letting him write scripts and stories, and, I, I and it becomes the most pretentious bullshit I've ever read. I'm not arguing the story could be better. I'm just saying... The character himself is not overrated. Okay, so let me try to put this in another in another way. So you know how like when people get into like arguments about like religion and shit like mm-hmm. that, and you have like really extreme people on both sides. You got like your extreme like zealots, and you got your extreme atheists. Yeah, I feel like Spawn is written by like Tom McFarlane is like an extreme atheist. Like his Spawn's like caught in the middle of this war between heaven and hell. He was like fuck both sides and your your stupid ass rules and your. But the that's way- been written several times. I know, but it gets over. If it's I really like, it's on the nose and it's super in your like face. Constantine's the same. I was going to say if I want to read something or see something of that. It's good. Though. Constantine oh. is good. The Keanu Reeves movie. Is good. I like yeah, a it. lot of people uh, shit on it. Oh, it's great. I, I love I, it. I, I, I am one of them that shit all over that. I movie. love that movie. I love that movie. Terrible. For I think Constantine's is. a great fucking movie. What's dude? wrong with that movie? I can't believe it's not John Constantine. Doesn't it's, matter. It's, it's still, it matters uh, to me. Why? <laughs> because I love John Constantine. I think the, the visuals the whole of Constantine. Really Keanu Reeves has proven he's a good actor in those kind of roles. Yeah. Uh, John yeah. Wick. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's good in Sean Wick. It's the same. The character just he's. Oh, uh, they, uh, uh, they, they, they uh, You're just, you just look, John Wick. I get where you're coming from. You want like a visual representation yeah, of John Constantine. You want <laughs> the blonde fight. guy with the from Britain. And, <laughs> yeah. and Jen Counter Reeves is neither British nor blonde. But you know what? He got the smoking and the attitude down to a T. You have to admit that. And he had the smoking down. They also got the attitude and the behavior of John Constantine down. We're getting off track, assholes. Look, Spawn. Spawn. <laughs> Spawn has a fan base, doesn't deserve it. No. Not at all. Not, and by the way, so this comic in like the mid-90s went to like 53 issues, which is when the story completely jumped the shark. You know how Spawn would be an amazing comic book? It is a comic book. What no, are you I'm saying about? what would make it like amazing. <laughs> what? Remove the dialogue. An actual true artistic. <laughs> you, you know, want, like you want like the Nutcracker suite of Spawn, like, where they just dance like there around are comic and books do like where visual. There is no dialogue. Everything is so, yeah. based on like the images. So, and you just look at the pretty exactly. Uh, like what are you five? Tom McFarlane draw for me. Just pictures. I don't want story. Reading is hard. Do, you would you re- 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 no? You could have somebody else write it. Do you? Want- I would let somebody else write that. Yeah, I do. Letting George Lucas let somebody else direct his films. Tom like, no, Tom is a great artist. Right. Yeah, exactly. And let him just be like, you know what? I can draw everything you want me to draw. I can make this come to life. But someone give me a story. Yeah. He, somebody did give him the story. It was called The Bible. Right. Like, <laughs> he's like, here's Revelations, and I got a superhero have, with a have, venom suit in the middle Will of Wheaton it. Will Wheaton write it. I don't care. Will Wheaton? <laughs> Wheaton. Wheaton. So, Will. Don't you talk shit about Will Wheaton. <laughs> Cool. No shit talk. I'm just saying, would you go to Spawn? I don't know. But would he read it? Could I it mean like an audiobook with Will Wheaton reading the comic? I'd read that. I'd listen to that. <laughs> some sounds. Anyway, all right. So yeah, Spawn, Hulk, me uh, both of them just completely overrated. This one, I think Andy and I kind of got into like we got into a little bit of a I don't want to say a debate. We both were probably in agreement on this one, but we were fighting over who got to shit on this you person. Got, you got into a tiff. We got into a little <laughs> we got into a little tiff over who got to shit on this guy the most. Wait, we we fight? We do fight. Oh, shit. We fight a lot. We fight with love. We do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's no love. I literally fart on your pillow when you're not around. <laughs> From Indiana. <laughs> How's that pink eye working out for you? From Indiana. Long distance right. dudes. <laughs> I missed you guys. I'm glad I'm back in town. Anyway, uh, so my number three, Green Arrow. Here is a character that was 
complete, I would not want to say a pure obscurity, but it was definitely a C tier Justice League member until CW <laughs> decided to crap out their latest version of Abomination. Like, the, I mean, and let me get this on the table right here. Smallville is wrong. It yeah. is complete just raping of the Superman mythos. So when CW is like, let's do it again. Like, well, first of all, you didn't pick a really good character this time because you picked fucking Green Arrow. And there is no such thing as a good hero that uses a bow and arrow. This includes... And that's where we, we came in. So you were you were so, wanting to discuss Green Arrow. I was going to discuss all archers for the exact same reasons you're picking Green Arrow. Right. So, so I mean, but let's talk about Green Arrow specifically right now. And then yeah. we'll, we, you and I can both expand on archers together. <laughs> we can hate on archers. Okay. So Green Arrow is uh, literally the same character as Batman, except one, way more of like a, a douchey, like bro chach. Like hitting on women all the time is not not really like he's not Terrible really facial he's hair. Ter- oh my god, the mustache for uh, real. And and, he's, Robin and Hood, he's fucking Robin Hood. He's a rich one percenter asshole who instead of donating his money to actually do good in the world, has decided that he's going to learn how to be a great archer and fight crime. And all that aside, the concept itself is laughable. It's just ridiculous. Well, Bow and arrows do not work in any kind of logistic sense. And I don't care about like utility belts or iron suits that fly. Some of this shit can work if if the technology was there. This is a dude who fights with like 15 to 20 arrows in his quiver. And he's out and then what yeah, the but, fuck does he do there? So, but was he trained by the League of Assassins? Like they show No, in the he show? trained okay. himself on an saying, island he crashed on in the beginning of his story. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Like, so like the, uh, the CW oh, show. His origin's even like His origin is stupid. <laughs> is. He is fucking Tom oh, Hanks cast away. He got a bow and arrow, and suddenly after a couple he weeks of hunting for like a bow and arrow. What was he hunting for on that island? Like two tr- cans. <laughs> I got me a bird. I can eat this week. Right. No, I, I you won't get an argument out of me. I think Green Arrow is the dumbest member of the Justice League, and it's pointless to be there. There's no reason for him to be there whatsoever. How would he even get on that team? Who let him in the fucking watchtower? And that's the same it as Hawkeye. The, it, was the, it was the 50s. Hawkeye and Green Arrow. But at least Hawkeye is like a, a trained no. assassin. Like He actually can do hand-to-hand So combat. this is where that's Andy and I agree. No, I agree as an archer. He is. That's dumb. I mean, they even showed dumb. it in the Avengers movie. Yes. When he ran out of arrows and he had to have his ass saved. He says, I'm he's done. Like, like, well, yeah. But so all I'm saying, Green- he's literally, he literally can still do hand-to-hand combat. All right, well, look, let me put it this way. If Green Arrow sucks, that means by default, all archers suck. This includes all of their sidekicks. Speedy, Arsenal, Red Arrow, fucking... That includes the same guy. (laughs) No, I'm talking about the female Speedy. Oh, okay. From the show? Yeah, sure. sure. The show is just terrible in general. First of all, he doesn't have the terrible mustache, not canon. <laughs> I actually enjoy the show. He doesn't only... have a cute little green hat with a point on the front with oh, a feather in it. Right. I enjoy the show for the, 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 the pure fact that it actually has somewhat of a story. And they would have got away from like the true Green Arrow like origin. You know, the only time Robin Hood is actually a good character is when he's either an anthropomorphic fox or when he's fighting Alan Rickman. These are the only times Robin Hood has not sucked balls. No, I agree. Green Green Arrow is fucking Robin Hood. Hawkeye is fucking Robin Hood. Bow and Arrow heroes are stupid. In everything. Everything. Overwatch. Fuck Hanzo. Hanzo. Anyone here an Overwatch fan? By making his arrows the size of logs. Cheapest character and all. It's uh, ridiculous. But he's a good character. You, you can actually take out a lot of people. Do him. you main Hanzo? No, Sweeney? I don't main Hanzo. But I can play Hanzo. <laughs> I can play Hanzo too, but then hey. I lose self respect and I quit. That's fine. I don't have any self respect anymore. It's gone. <laughs> oh. you, play, you have to play Hanzo. <laughs> arrows, garbage. Green arrow, especially. I'm mean, making the poster can, child of all shitty arrow heroes. That's, I can only think of those two in the whole entire. Like, outside like the, the sidekicks. Merlin is a villain. Can we rewind 30 seconds? Did you smack him on the leg? I know. I was like, oh, poor guy. He tends to be all the time. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Nah, yeah, yeah. Like, there is only one. This, is, this isn't a safe place. Is there, yeah, is there, is there a doll? <laughs> no, no, not in this room, unfortunately. So, there's an awesome archer. But it's because all he just moved past every, it. He everything is it, yeah. is it Sterling Archer? <laughs> no, everything that he does is Soon. is uh, even unrealistic for like the suit. Legolas. Oh my god. Like how fast he's shooting, Elf how he never runs out of ammo. Yeah. 
ammo. Never runs ever, out of arrows. Ever, 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 ever that's a good point. So the the in Lord of the Rings, how long does that story like take? Like it's like it's supposed to be like a really long journey. But Legolas just keeps getting more arrows. Dude, in one battle, he's like riding shields, shooting arrows up on the castle, shooting arrows, running on the ground, shooting arrows. Remember when he took out a gigantic well, bullet font <laughs> mammoth yes, thing he, with arrows? He, and then he, he, had more after you know, that. he did run out. He did run out in the battle of. Um, when the deep. Yeah, when he did run out there because then he did the surfing. Huh. After he ran out, he started pulling arrows out how of the orcs and kept shooting. How the fuck do you remember all this? <laughs> God damn it. I have a photographic memory for useless trivia. If you ever know, I'm not good will hunting, but so I'm like it's a also useless Lord of the good will hunting. Like, you, it's a memorable I was, movie. I don't think I've seen any of the Lord of the Rings since Return of the King came out. What the hell is wrong with you? Well, it's funny because Return of the King was the last Lord of the Rings right, movie. Exactly. The Hobbit <laughs> films were Hobbit a separate Rings. book. Right. I saw one, two, didn't even. I haven't seen that in the third one. I was like, I'm Battle not five I don't even want to finish this. The Hobbit series? Yeah. yeah. Mm. They did so well, except they added all this stuff that didn't happen in the books. And like, so you're going to add me stuff that didn't happen in this storyline, but you're not going to add right. things that did happen in Lord of the Rings. Now, back to the Archer thing. I can appreciate a story with an Archer, not saying they're good characters. I can appreciate if they actually give them combat outside of being an Archer. So, I can appreciate that. So you're still a good Batman. combat. That's fine. What, Bat, what makes Batman Batman is that he well, is trained. Let's hold off on that. I'm no, gonna... Right. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, like, as long as it's not your gimmick. Like, you know, I mean, Green Arrow, his entire gimmick is, I can shoot arrows, but one of them has a fucking boxing glove on them. Oh, my God. You know, ultimate, ultimate Hawkeye kills someone with a toothpick, I think. Oh, my God. Right. Well, that's Bullseye, isn't it? No, actually, it's Bullseye. Hawkeye isn't too. Ultimate Hawkeye actually Bullseye? They're the same person. <laughs> This is all stupid because it's all the now, same. Do you hate bullseye too because just because you give put him. Or do you like bullseye better because he can use anything? I like bullseye only because I like Colin Farrell and I have a problem and I admit that. You, <laughs> just for the fucking Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. Awesome. Uh, it was so bad. It's uh, good. Sometimes awesome. movies. Fuck out. Sometimes <laughs> movies are so shitty they're good, and that's a movie that's so shitty you can't help but laugh at. It's so, like the best comedy. The reason you can I watch. like Bullseye is from a from a Deadpool comic. That actually, that, uh, Bullseye was Hawkeye, and they, they, those two fought. And it was hysterical. So at one point, they get into a meat packing factory, and Deadpool stabs him with meat hooks, and he says, "Say it, say it." He's like, "Get your damn meat hooks off me!" Yes. <laughs> For funny you mentioned Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool's my number two. Sorry, I I get it. Like Deadpool, I got okay. You finally have a comic book character that can swear and that can make dick and fart jokes left and right and breaks the fourth wall. But that shit gets super old and one-dimensional after a while. It's the same shit all the time. It is. Not, it is. It was cute for a little bit, but the fan base for Deadpool has gotten See, to a point where it's filled with a bunch of wannabes and know nothings, and I'm tired of it. So that's that's the problem. The, the character and the comics did not make this bad. It's the fans. The yeah, fans right, fair enough. ruined Deadpool. Fans did ruin Deadpool. When you go to a con and you see 50 fucking Deadpools with just a mask and some random shit. And they act like a douchebag because they're like, oh, I'm in character. Right. No, you're just a douchebag. You're right. just a douchebag. They ruined it. And The only person who should be allowed to wear a Deadpool costume is Ryan Reynolds. I agree 100%. And, and Deadpool like had a following, but it wasn't until Wolverine Origins where Deadpool just blew up. Right. Out of nowhere. Oh, Wolverine the, the Origins. terrible Deadpool? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, it's so Deadpool that abomination of like super blue up. Hey, I think he started to blow up there. It was more when Ryan Reynolds leaked that like their test screening of the highway scene, and the that was fans after though, just, wasn't it? Well, for a yeah, long time, after, people were pissed off about Deadpool because Wolverine Origins wrong. Deadpool yeah. was shitty. Yeah, it was like wrong. Baraka, Baraka it was, Blades. It's like it was wrong. No man. mask. No mask. Mouth sewed shut. He's the fucking merc with a yeah, mouth. Yeah, you're right, Baraka yes, Blades. Yes, Cyclops. And he had Cyclops beams. It was just so and that gave him dumb. his dark eyes. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, at, he blew up a little bit after after Wolverine Origins because when Wolverine Origins came out, he did not have a, a comic book. Right, and then two years later, he had four. Right, he had Deadpool, Deadpool team up, Deadpool core. There was a Deadpool core. And Fuck him, Lady Deadpool, Headpool, yeah, Dogpool, Kid Deadpool, Deadpool. yeah, Kidpool, Cowboy Deadpool. And that's what I'm saying. I think. That they, the fans pushed this rhetoric that like he can be anything, and yep. they gave into it. 
And I think if you just let Deadpool be Deadpool, he'd be hysterical. And that's he'd why be fun. He's literally a pandering character. Right. That's what he does. He's just a character that is just blowing fans, and they and they get off on it. And you know, it's it's not interesting. It, it serves no purpose, and the jokes are repetitive. So I'm I'm sorry. I liked Deadpool at one point. The movie was great. I'm not going to hate and the I movie. Think that's why the movie was great because they kind of reeled him back in. They they you could tell that those those were people that created it that knew. Early Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds was with, born like, to play Deadpool. And they yeah. stuck with like the premise of Deadpool, his smart mouth, his ability to fight anybody, his cocky attitude, his <laughs> cocky. his ability to again break that fourth wall on on good occasions when it needs to happen. You know, and he makes fun of things that every fan thinks when they're watching X-Men. The douche bag like Cyclops and like the, the the suits they wear and all that crap. He he does bring it's all of us inside to thinking yes X Men are cool, but why the fuck do they have to wear those suits? I, I get it. I'm I'm not saying the character himself like isn't funny. I'm saying he's become overrated I, I because of the fans that are just insufferable douchebags. They're just insufferable human beings, man. And you're right. The last time we went to Wakan, which was like Wizard World Columbus, there were like 50 Deadpools, and not one of them was good. Except for maybe the one that actually did like the fucked up face. Yeah, he had like his actual like and the makeup face. and the scarred face and ugly. He was like an avocado made Blue, with an older avocado. avocado. <laughs> I get it. Like, yes, yeah, ha ha ha. But believe me, man, there's a point where something becomes too popular for its own good, where it, where the people start ruining it. Yeah, which leads me to my number one: Batman. Wrong. Batman. <laughs> Batman. Man. Batman. 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 Wrong. Where is I don't see. Yeah, it, I, don't, I don't know how you can think a member of the Trinity is overrated. Oh, World's please finest. allow me to educate you. Your because if you had me, at, you had me, you had me. And now you've lost me. I mean, oh, to, like, that was only two you had me. What about the other like two you had? You me? had me. You had me. You had me. You had me. You lost me. Okay, cool. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, from the beginning, world's finest Superman and Batman. If you think Batman's overrated by association, you think Superman's overrated. Let me explain why I have a problem with the Bat. It is entirely because the people that worship this character. Do not take a close look at the character. The things that are written about Batman are things you should never emulate. One, he is a one percenter who was born into wealth. He didn't work for that shit. His daddy did. Don't get me wrong. At some point in time, Batman did some innovative shit with Wayne Industries so that he could further be the Batman. But at no point in time does he donate money to Gotham PD so they can have like body armor or a better SWAT team. No, he decides to dress like a goddamn furry and go out and kung fu ninja assholes in, a, in an alleyway and like a party crime. Wait a minute, he, he donates money to charity constantly to the orphanages, to yeah. like to the children, Constant. to the hospitals, and yet there's still Constant. crime. Also, also, and there's still crime in Metropolis. When did when did armor? When was armor? Like designated as furry. No, no. He dresses like a bat. He thinks he's a fur. He's a bit no, bad. No, a he's not a the reason, physical, the like, reason he dresses like a bat is because that was his one fear. And to conquer fear, you put yourself in it. Do you think he's like over it at some point? Like, and he doesn't look like the bat. Do you think he likes these words? He doesn't actually look like a. a, a, like did, a man, did man bat give him the chilies? Was he scared of man bat? And second of all, the, you, you missed an entire period of his life. <laughs> yes, he was a child. That his parents got killed, he inherited money. Get over it. What the fuck did he do with it? He, yeah, just, he, he became a genius. He still studied. He still went through all this stuff. Yeah, he became a douchebag. Yes. The world's greatest detective. Oh, I'll give him that. He's, He's a the genius. World's greatest. So, okay, so Batman it, is the apex pinnacle of the human. So where I was saying the Hulk appeals to me because he turns into this thing that I can never be, that uh, this rage beast, this big hawking thing. Batman appeals to everyone because he's human. Batman. He is literally... Just an average man that dresses like a bat. You're right. He's human, and he's got human weaknesses, like young boys. <laughs> I cannot give the pro the biggest number one problem with Batman is Robin. I'll give you that. I don't understand why he always takes in a young boy to be a psychic. Now I could see the argument of it's because he adopts he was them. A he young wants them boy to make them. Oh, he adopts them. All right. Right. I understand that part, and I get that. But it's like, That's why would you? Grace but why would you put God. them Grayson. in the line of fire? Look, even yes. He doesn't look, want to at first. Even SNL like saw the right on the wall with the ambiguously gay duo, Ace and Gary. Like Batman has pedophilic tendencies. It's read between the lines, man. Bad, like the, every Robin has been a young boy, and he's ruined all of their lives. Jason Todd, especially. 
it, there's a book dedicated to the homo, the like the uh, seduction of the innocent. And that's what it's actually called, seduction of the innocent. Of the innocent. Batman so. almost killed the whole comic book industry in like the fifties. Well, and I can see the early writings when they did this that the people that read it may have had some weird intent or whatever behind it because it was written a long time ago. <laughs> but I don't think you get, but you still get these stories of the Robins that they progress. Okay, so you love Jason Todd. I like him because he hates the Batman. That's fine, but you still love Jason Todd. I like Red Hood. A, he, I don't like Jason Todd as Robin. You like I voted Red, for him no to one, die too. No one. I voted Jason for him to Todd die. I called that Robin. Robin. Right. So no, no. I, like Amy said nobody liked Jason Todd as Robin. That's why he. That's died. why it, he, they killed him because the the community hated him. Let me. So let me. Let me please. Let me just try to articulate this. Here's a guy who's trained for the majority of his life to become. The the physical apex of humanity. He's a, he knows every type of martial art. He's a, a super smart. Super, yeah, he's smart. As, he's, he's not, I wouldn't say he's a twelfth level intellect like Lex Luthor, no. but he's definitely the greatest detective on earth. I'll give him that. He's the greatest forensic scientist. Thank God for the bat pewter, or God knows he wouldn't be doing shit. But yes, he he's got skills. But he's also a ninja, right? He's trained by the League of Assassins. Yeah. So he's like fights in the shadows. He uses fear and, de- and deception to like get in the heads of criminals. Um. Here comes Robin in a fucking yellow and red and green tunic in the middle of the like he's wearing a goddamn like crossing okay, guard Robin uniform. Robin doesn't look like that today. Batman didn't look like Batman today well, then either. Like was it, care was today. it like haven't they kind of said in like Rebirth and New Fifty Two that like Robin like Dick Grayson became Robin as kind of like a distraction to distract the criminals. That's where I'm going. So Batman uses a small boy in brightly colored uniform, leotard, panties, little booties, whatever you want to call it, and makes him jump around like a little acrobat on rooftops. And everyone's going, shoot the thing that's bright that you can actually see. And then Batman's like sneaking up on like, you looked at the little boy, me too. <laughs> and like snaps their necks and shit. Batman is literally corrupting a young man so that he doesn't get the bullet shot at him the little kid gets bullet shot at him instead. This is just wrong. You shouldn't even be bringing in a kid into your war on crime. Well, could you, it's a ruin a life. Could you other take the other way that these kids came to him as a you know a mentor and looked up to him and wanted to be like him, and so they picked up. Literally, the, only one Robin did that. Right. That is Tim Drake. Right. But then they could have done that, and and I don't think Batman ever intended for the initial, you know, like. Oh, you're going to come fight crime with me? I think you wanted to help them out. Now, yes, there could be some pedophile tendencies there too, but I, do you think it was the goodness of him trying to help them? Okay. Let's say for even a minute, we'll say for sake of argument, Batman was trying to do the right thing by Dick Grayson. Dick's family died. The mob like slit their ropes when they're doing their like trapeze. What? Which the flying Graysons. Yeah, the flying Graysons. Great. Um, let's say like you know he adopts young Dick and takes him under his wing. <laughs> no, fuck you guys. <laughs> takes him under his wing. You know, gives him a home, and then Dick discovers the Bat Cave, and Batman's like, "You want you, you want to go out and fight crime with me? Are you describing Batman Beyond right now? No, nope, oh, okay. Just, <laughs> It's actually saying, how Dick Grayson found the Batcave in the comics. He found it living in the way of manner. I think, I think we're talking about Batman forever. No, Batman forever. Thank you. This is literally Batman, so I don't want to tell you. It's the actual origin of Dick Grayson as Robin. He, so Robin like gets trained and becomes like a decent prime fighter on his own. And then what happens? He gets too old. And he goes out on his own, and Batman gets lonely. Because nobody wants to be the sidekick can I, forever. Can I finish? Aziba Zabazu You're can't like, finish. You're like, oh, he just got too old. No, he didn't get too Aziba old. Aziba Zabazu he can't was, finish. Hey, I, I can't finish. Now Nightwing. Can't finish, can't finish, can't finish. Can I finish? When you're done being wrong, you All can right. finish. All right, well, I'm done being wrong, because I'm right. <laughs> because Dick Grayson became one of the best. No, Dick Grayson hit the age of 18, and it was no, no longer fun for Bruce Wayne. He became Nightwing. Mm. Who doesn't like Nightwing? I don't like Nightwing. Yes, you do. Uh, That's a lie. Uh, I love Nightwing. Yeah, it's a lie. Everyone loves I'm Nightwing. Huge Dick Grayson fan. Nightwing's cool because he's a Superman <laughs> fan. Oh, he actually is. That's where he got his I character. Got Nightwing that. is a Kryptonian superhero, right. and he dawned by talking with suits. Yes. It's because he's got good taste. Anyway, so everyone likes Dick Grayson. So yeah, but so Dick Grayson <laughs> turns the age eighteen. He's kind of done being in the shadow of the bat. As any man out. would be. You're right. You're as any man would be. Right. So Batman lets him go on his way because Batman's bored with Dick. Dick's too old for his taste anyway. So who's the next Robin? Jason Todd. And did Batman go looking for him? No, Jason Todd strips exactly. the Batmobile and like takes the wheels off of it. And Batman comes out after beating up the Riddler or some shit and like finds Jason Todd with a crowbar taking his tires. First of all, who the shit is going to rebuy the tires on the Batmobile? You can't take it to a chop shop. What car is that going to fit on? 
None. Wrong. You dumb Jason. So Batman's like, hmm, young, dumb, and full of anyway. Here it comes. So I'm sorry, but Batman is written like you gotta look at this character. He is a one percenter furry who likes young boys. I have nothing so to do. So you've skipped out on genius, detective. I don't need to focus on those things. These blaring red flags of disgusting behavior are just ruin him. Ruin him for me. He's the one man that could defeat any single person on the Justice League. Wrong. It's not wrong. It is wrong. They actually no. made a whole... Okay, so... Tower of Babel? Yeah, yeah okay. they actually oh, got Excuse it. me, Vandal Savage made those plans. He stole Batman's in- incapacitation plans. They plans. were out to kill. As Vandal Savage made call for them and made them to kill. Uh, well, I mean, I guess maybe Doom was Vandal Savage, but I guess Tower of Babel, it was Ra's yeah. Yes. Ra's Ghul. But he, he studies he studies everybody and knows how to defeat anybody. Well, you know how you beat Batman, apparently? Talk about his mommy. Okay, it's not, they're not, they're, no, they're not no. talking about the atrocity. Everyone wants to talk shit Batman about Superman. Superman. Like, Superman can die from a what? kryptonite bullet. But you know what? Talk Batman, about you talk period. shit about his parents. And Superman lets a bunch of innocent people die in Metropolis because he refuses to take the fight out. We of already power. had this discussion. He was in the suit for one day. He was barely <laughs> Superman. He was just learning how to use his powers. He finally had to fight. It was the first fight he ever had in his life. Of course, there were going to be collateral damage. Mike, shut the fuck up. Mike, no, you're done. My dog is only seven Jeez. months old and knows not to shit on the carpet. Superman should have known not to fight in fucking Metropolis. He never <laughs> fought anyone ever. Okay, your dog does... Your dog... No, his dog's super yeah, poorly like, trained. Doesn't like know about the shit in the carpet. Yes. <laughs> no, Eddie. I said Eddie is seven months old and he knows not to shit on the carpet. I don't yeah, see yeah, Superman yeah, shit on anybody's yeah, carpet. Yeah. I did see him take out Wayne, Wayne Industries headquarters, though, which was great. That was one of the best parts of the movie. Anyway... My point is, is that everyone's got their weakness, and just because Batman is a dick enough to exploit the ones of the people he works with, doesn't make him better than make everybody. Him a dick. It makes he, him a no, total dick. Literally, you are a human being, All and right. there's God, people around you, that it could turn on you at any moment. Why would you not have a contingency plan? All right, so let me rephrase my statement. Having a contingency plan is a good idea. Yes. Not having proper firewalls in your fucking computer to save it from Mirror Master. Mirror Master, Sweeney! That is a shitty C-tier Flash villain, and Batman just lets him cozy up into the Batcave and goes into his computer and gets all of his plans. What's Batman upstairs doing? Probably blowing Alfred. I've had enough. First of all, Batman is not as cool as everyone thinks he is. Mirror Master has the greatest greatest comic book character ever created. (laughs) Mirror Master has has an ability that can actually be manipulated like that. Oh, you are you are literally making excuses for me. I'm not Master. making excuses. This this is what I'm talking hide about. In glass. I'm so I'm saying. Yeah, but Batman is supposed to be the bear bear, the greatest, smartest dude in the whole wide world. Can you right? see things that hide in glass? Yeah, me. I'm in the mirror. Like me. I'm hiding. Is it really you? I don't give a shit, man. Like Batman should have some kind of contingency to not let <laughs> Mirror Master into his most secret <laughs> pedophile den. No. There's not one character without flaw. And they always make Batman that everyone the, has mistakes. Everyone, ha- but Batman shares flaws with Jared from Subway. That's a problem. No, Batman Batman one time not anything it's not a problem. Happened. You heard that. You heard it right. Name so, one time. Name one time. One. What? One sexual encounter. I'll pull it up on the Googles. <laughs> All right. Every, anything's on Google. <laughs> it's true. I could probably find some dirty shit of Batman around <laughs> yeah, on Google. Uh, Look, yeah, you might not, but it's the same. My problem with is so much the relationship. I, 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 their love is as sacred as everybody else's love. It's the age problem. It's that Robin's not 18. That's my problem. Because Bruce experienced his trauma at a young age. He sure so did. when he sees other people at a young age experiencing trauma or something terrible, of course he's going to take them in. Look, man, here's a guy who suffered... Yeah, he watched his parents get gunned down. But you know what? Superman's entire race was murdered. He doesn't remember that. He, was a, he, he, he got to see it firsthand through the crystals and the torches of solitude. It's not the same thing. As it's it's, it's pretty hard being an orphan. I, we, none of us are orphans here, but I'm sure we can all agree it's probably pretty hard being an orphan. I would agree. All right. Now so, you're Superman because my, you have all so, your powers. But here's Batman. <laughs> so, so Superman took a tragedy and made like a positive change in the world. Batman took a tragedy and decided to start dropping people into vats of chemicals and making them like the biggest serial killers the world has ever seen. First of all, that Joker origin story did never, that's dumb. It happened. It's dumb. It happened. You can't you can't say just because it's dumb doesn't mean it didn't happen. No one Batman Joker doesn't have is an origin. Single handedly responsible for at least three of the biggest murderers in Gotham. Two face. Directly responsible. 
He was there and he saw the ass and he didn't move quick enough in court and, <laughs> and fucking Two Face was born. Joker, you definitely. <laughs> why so, doesn't he not kill Joker? I'm with Jason so Todd about on this one. You're blaming Batman. And that is one for origin story that is not my a point, canon origin story. My point is that Batman is as insane as the people he puts in Arkham. I mean, he belongs there himself. He himself does not make Gotham a better place. We know this because Gotham is still written with crime and he's still so revolving. To, no, it's not. Metropolis's crime level is actually quite low on a street level, but we're talking about like giant like <laughs> robots and shit showing and up. That's times Earth level also defenses. Cities. How many times has he had to fight Darkseid now? Like seven. Yeah. You can't kill Darkseid. Every time you try, Darkseid finds a way back. You can't kill the Joker. You can literally kill the Joker. Superman proves that in the alternate reality. We always always talked about the best things about comics are the villains. No. Yes. Who said that? I didn't say Everybody that. Everybody has said that. <laughs> and Batman has the best villain. The best. The best. The Joker is the best villain, period. Look, if I wanted to see a pedophile fight a clown, I'd get on Pornhub. You do. I've watched your search history. This is just weird. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just, I can't even, I can't even believe you guys are defending I think, this. I think, I think Batman and has. And you just said like the alternate realities are in play. So the Dark Knight Returns. I want you to look up and see the white Technically, that's beat really you. not an alternate reality. Dark Knight Returns is a fanfic written by Frank Miller. What? Shut up. <laughs> no. It's really a thing. Wrong. It's a fanfic. Wrong. Wrong. It is a fanfic. If you're okay, a comic book fan, don't start reaching. There really is a Dark Knight Returns <laughs> series. Uh, yeah. Look, man, I get where the fandom comes from Batman. He's dark. He's edgy. He's in the shadows. I don't think that, I don't think that has anything to do with the fandom whatsoever. Look, okay, well, how about this? There are so many people that are just massive fans of Batman and talk massive amount of shit about Superman, but they don't know shit about either of these characters. So basically, you're you're again, your premise is with the fans, not no. the character itself. Only the fact that it does rival your one favorite hero. Look, man, Superman gets a bad rap. Nobody really understands. I don't have anything wrong with Superman. I didn't say you did. But so saying, like, Batman is the one person on this world. Or not this world, obviously. Uh, the fake world. In comic land. That can take out Superman. And Bat Superman could kill Batman exactly. if he wanted to. Exactly. And he, all he has to do is nuke him from orbit with heat vision. Exactly. They both have that ability over each other. And they're, they're the only two that have that on each other. All right. One guy, okay, they are look and we've agreed that they are like sort of different sides of the same coin. Batman Superman's more in the light, Batman's more in the dark. Exactly. Yin and yang, all that crap. It was essentially that's why they made are the that world. Way. Superman's Finest. weakness is Kryptonite, Batman's weakness is Martha. That was so dumb. Why'd you I, say that name? I couldn't believe they put that Why in the movie. Why are you talking about my mommy? Terrible. I couldn't believe they put it in the movie. That was the worst. Yo, if Superman can get ever. over the genocide of an entire species, then Batman can get over his fucking parents right. going to the movies at the bad time. And I think he ha is over it like that. I don't think that would ever trigger what it did in the fucking By the way, Thomas movie. Wayne, you took your kid to a movie at like super late time. Oh my and God. then you walk out in the an alley called I think, Crime Alley. I think there's this a word a for good this. way to get home, dear. I think there's a word, a condition where you blame the victim. I'm going to blame the victim. <laughs> they should have sat there and just given up all their jewelry and not taken a bullet to he the face. He did give up his jewelry. No, he makes a move on the gunner. He makes a move After on the guy holding them up. up. And he still makes a move, Sweeney. You He's got a gun in your face. You let him walk away and just cancel your credit cards. Would you? Oh, you know, that's another, that's another weakness of Batman. He shut off his fucking credit. Done. I think they did that in Dark Knight Rises. They turned off his yeah. credit. He still was fine. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you some bullshit. <laughs> Fucking loopholes for Dark Knight Rises. One, he goes from like some Middle Eastern jail pit that Bane puts him in after breaking his back, right? Sure. And somehow he magically goes through like Bruce Lee training to get his fix his broken spinal column. Uh, First of all, wait, hold on. Superman reverses time to save Lois Lane. Lane. We're not talking about Superman, guys. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me start. Let me start. I'm not finished. Let me start. I'm not finished. You're telling me a genius who can is has the best mind in the world doesn't know how to stru like structure himself to re-engineer his back? If that's the case, what's wrong with Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking is paralyzed. There's a difference. So is Batman. We're also talking about fictional characters. Fictional, fictional characters. characters. Stephen Hawking can't move anything from his neck down. Mm. Did Bane do that? No. no just making sure, because Bane's a dick. And the fact that you brought him up. I never come up with Bane's voice. Oh, so bad. Black hole singularity. Oh. <laughs> I like the Bane voice. 
I don't care. That's why I, I like, like it. it. I like it too. That's why I do. I do I the like Bane the voice. voice. The Bane voice gave me like another voice to add to my repertoire of voices. I, I like it. I think it's a fun little addition I for me. Deception. I'm glad they didn't do the Mexican wrestler. Uh, Luchador Bane. Yeah. Luchador Bane. Luchador Bane. I kind of would have liked. I think I would have liked Luchador Bane. I don't think that would have been relevant to where Bruce was at the I think time. I wanted Venom though. I think I wanted like the um the, the chemical that yeah. makes him bulk out. I would have been yeah. happier with that. Well, I would have liked that true more realistic. The true Bane, yeah. but, they, but they kind of hinted at it with the scars and stuff like that. They didn't give him the true venom, though. So, so I'm sorry. You, 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 like I said, you didn't interrupt me. Zebazal, you interrupted. Um, so he's a, he finally okay. We'll, we'll suspend disbelief. He heals his back in the big pit, right? Right. And he's like training, and he makes the jump. He gets out of the pit. Yeah. He's literally wearing nothing but a couple of flip flops and some rags. No passport. Nothing. How the fuck in post 9 11 does Batman walk out of a Middle Eastern country and get into a military occupied Gotham? I got this. Does not do it. Period. Bullshit. So, at, what's the main conspiracy theory at the end? That he didn't die. Why? Because he autopiloted the bat. So plane. are you telling me he can't autopilot it to him across? He was wearing like fucking rags and some flip flops. He didn't have a maybe, cell phone. Maybe, he didn't have anything maybe to get he that has shit. An implanted GPS device inside of him that he can trigger to have him come get him. Do they say that in the movie? Does it matter? Shut the fuck up. You are He's reaching crazy. so hard I'm right not now. Reaching. It's Batman. The He's answer, a genius and he can make anything he wants. The answer to all this is. He's the Batman. And that is why I hate Batman fans, because that is not an argument. I mean, that was my argument. My argument also, was he's, he's also a ninja. My argument was... You want to be a king, so, so, like, so, so you can't blend in? Yeah. He's the whitest white dude ever. He's a one percenter. He, and he had no money. His money was shut off at this point That's in the fine. movie. Okay. He's broke okay. as a joke. So, they turned the lights out. That's fine. Okay, so... so But he still has Lucius... Yes, helping him. Alfred help. He but still has resources. Look at the phone call. There's not that, but like you don't think that Batman in all of his training has some way to get back there. No, no. When he's literally left with no resources, no utility belt, no vehicles, nothing, and no way to prove that he is in fact who he says he is. It would have been months, months before he got so a passport. Me, so you told me there NBC. is no poor people in this world that make their way into this country. Ask Trump. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> there are people who are able to get into the country. So he can sneak in. But no, God, you're going to keep interrupting me. What is this? Your argument's invalid. No, my argument is invalid. Only because I can't say it. No, That's he can literally get on a freighter and then can cargo hold and get over here. Who's he paying to get on this freighter? He doesn't have to pay. He's a sneak on. When they find a goddamn stowaway, his ass is getting tossed in the Atlantic. You think they're going to toss He's going to kick their ass? Come on. Uh, now. You think he doesn't know how to not be Batman seen? beats up innocent sailors? Sure, now? why not? But I always does the innocent sailors. I'm sure. What, I mean, what I'm saying is, you you are you are leave, leaving out the idea that Batman has installed a, a GPS. B once it's triggered, that something will come get him. Why would that not happen? He's a genius. He thinks of everything. None of that explains how he's even able to get past the military into Gotham, which is surrounded on all fronts. Because if it's Batman, uh, he'll find a way. He's Batman. That's my uh, excuse. I'm I guess, Batman. I guess I have an easier time just suspending my disbelief. Well, that it's just like. You can find different holes to find your way in. Period. You guys are wrong and full of shit. You guys are reaching. Batman sucks. My balls. And he probably would if I was under the age of 15. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done with you people. Who's next? Tim, you're I'm next. I'm glad your list is over. It's awful. <laughs> What's that? I'm glad his list is over. Please go. <laughs> you kiss my ass, Batman He's style. Like, Isn't it cool? I'm, that not, even, like that's thing, that's I'm not even a Batman fan. Your argument is just so bad. You're literally making up bullshit like he's got a GPS implant in him magically that's never explained ever. Give me a break. You guys are reaching. Does Tony Stark have stuff inside of This is what's him? wrong with Batman fans. You reach for bullshit. Does Tony Stark have stuff inside of his body that helps him? So He's you, not Tony Stark. You just think that he has absolutely no skills or resources to be able to find Besides his way money. onto a ship to come back over to Gotham. Not in the amount of time he does. Like, he's literally days. It's like three days he gets back there. There's no friggin' way he gets back there as quickly as he does without resources. A, a day. You need resources to get back and pass the military that quickly. It is complete bullcrap. It is a huge plot hole in that film. Sorry, no, it's not. And then what? And this is what? And you are you both right now are proving plot my point. Holes are where you're like, I cannot suspend my disbelief. I can't suspend I can. my disbelief for I that can crap. Believe he can I can make believe it. that Bane blows up the fucking Steelers. Good job, Bane. But I cannot believe that Batman walks across a Middle Eastern desert, gets onto a freight plane or train, whatever you want to call it, and sneaks his way into military-occupied Gotham without a dollar to so, his name so or anything. You're okay with Ra's al Ghul doing it? 
When did Ra's al Ghul do it? He's always sneaking in everything. Yeah, but he probably got into the country legally. He probably, oh. like, she got an airplane, landed, and showed his no, passport. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Ra's al Ghul is one of the most <laughs> notorious wanted But people. he had resources. Checking no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He literally has resources. Yes. When they wreck Ra's people. Has League of Shadows. Thank yes. you. He has resources. But, 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 my, but, my, the the but, my, but my argument was that, like. They're since, not working for him, though. He might have a few. Give me a break, man. You are reaching. I'm done. I'm done with this circular oh reaching bullshit arguments. Tim, <laughs> you're upset because I'm presenting valid arguments. No, you're not presenting valid arguments. You are literally reach arounding the bad man. No, I'm, I'm done. Not. We're I'm done giving here. other We're opportunities. This, this is like arguing with a Tea Party member. I don't. This is why I don't get into Batman versus Superman arguments anymore. You brought it up. The, the, the finalized <laughs> argument is always. It's like Jay's like Hillary's emails and I am Batman. I like how you're like I I okay he could heal his his back. But there's no way he can no, sneak into a country. No, I said for the sake of argument, I will allow that to suspend his belief. I'm saying Bruce Wayne that. can sneak into a on country. Every, on period. every spy movie ever, on every action movie ever, on every period, this person has to get to A to B point. They find a way to do it. Oh, my God. That is, once again, a circular, no. generalized argument with no proof. There's no way Batman gets back into Gotham after what happened to him. He sits from the sidelines and watches the nuke go off. Sucks to be you. Find a new town to protect. Blood Haven's nearby. All I'm saying is, if you think that, you know, the Bore Identity can sneak into countries. I don't think Matt Damon makes a viable uh, 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 spies. So I think the Bore Identity movies are stupid That's in fine. general. I'm just saying they so. always do it, and no one ever argues with that. It's because they don't care to make like a intellectual look at the actual property. There's no, like I can believe that they just don't fucking, hate something enough to find an argument. Man, I believe that Goodwill Hunting can beat up fifteen guys. That's Mad two Damon. worlds. Oh, Tim, what's your list uh, about? So, so I went with something that may be a little bit more agreeable. Nah, let's find out. Yeah, see about that. <laughs> Um, and maybe won't cause as much controversy with the top five revivals that I don't want to see. Okay. Like, so, I think we can all these, agree that remakes like, are sh- sometimes shitty. Now, are these all stuff that are being planned to be remade, or you're just saying in general you don't want anyone these to even are, think about remaking this? These are stuff that's, this is stuff that's in, in stages okay, so this is, stages okay. or talks or whatever that's been announced to be made that I do not want to see. Uh, number five is a remake of Roadhouse. With Ronda Rousey? With Ronda Rousey. Fuck yes, I want to see that. No. No, I'm with Tim. You don't fucking remake Roadhouse, man. Okay, first of all, your attachment is to Swayze, not the movie. It is. Okay, so the attachment's to Swayze, and I get that. I understand 100%. But it's it's a bar fight movie. It It is. It's a great bar fight movie. Right, it is a great. You can remake that with Ronda Rousey. No, and here's why. The greatest line in Roadhouse is towards the end when he's fighting like the, the the fighter for like the rich guy on the field in the dark, and the rich the 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 guy says, "I used to fuck guys like you in prison." In prison. And right before he rips out his fucking eye, yeah. like throw with his big like eagle claw strike. All right, how does that work with Ronda Rousey as Patrick Swayze? Oh, it still works. Have you have, have you been to women's prison? A, have you seen a Ronda Rousey fight? I mean, uh, no, I want to answer his question. Right. That against me? <laughs> I've women's, seen her lose the last couple times. You ever times. watched Orange is the New Black? I have watched this one, watched Orange is the New Black. Women fuck women all the time in prison. I mean, I, but your question was, had I ever gone? Have you ever gone? No, but I'd like to. All right. <laughs> I mean, if that's it for Roadhouse, uh, number was four. That no, no, I'm not done with Roadhouse. Oh, not done with Roadhouse. No, I, I, I think Patrick Swayze, God rest him. Um, was the best this this is a movie that has a huge cult following it doesn't need to be remade there's nothing more to say yeah. with this story i didn't say it did does i didn't say it needs to be remade would i watch it absolutely of course you will because you have a like a series and don't get me wrong i do too we have a series you know like hard on for ronda rousey she's amazing yeah and i still think she should be captain marvel but we're going to walk away from that for a moment yeah i thought she'd be a good captain marvel but again i don't know how she acts yeah i've seen her in the expendables Brie larson will be I, I, what was it? Yeah, it was like three. three. I yeah. don't have a problem with a female lead. I don't have a problem with no, Ronda Rousey. Not. My problem is how lazy have we become as a generation that you can't just sit your kid down and I mean and say, "Hey, we're going to watch Roadhouse." You don't need to see a remake of it because the movie itself was already perfect. So you're just going to watch the original Roadhouse. Why do we have? Less. I'm with Tim on this one. This doesn't need to be touched. This is going to be your new Saturday Night Thing. It's a line from the movie. So you think you all gave me stare blank stare? No, no. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. So do you think it'll be? You think it's gonna be bad? Or do you, you I just still don't think need it needs it? to be remade. Because what if it's good? No, I'm just saying. What if it's good? It could be better than the first one. It still it did not need I, to happen. Right. I guess my I guess my 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 feelings on this are: 
Yes, it doesn't. The remake does not need to happen. But do we need a new age roadhouse? Can we get something that's a little more up to date? No, because honky tonk bar fights are stupid, and it, it only made happens. sense in the in, in the in the concept of roadhouse. It still happened. I can't go, I'm sure I can't go to any do. bar up yeah. here without finding some douche nozzle that wants to get in a fight over some stupid shit. Hey, hey, I, I've been kicked out of a bar for fighting. Exactly. So. Douche nozzle. Was it a women's hey, bar? Hey, <laughs> hey, I didn't start it, so I wasn't the douche nozzle. <laughs> I'm aware. I know. Okay. Was that Ace of Cups? How far was that? You got kicked? Oh, uh, goat. It was like right down the street from here. Shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. My friendly neighborhood I'll, bar. I'll, I'll I mean, take Tim anymore. We'll go there after the cast. I'll tell you once we're done recording. Cool. All right. All right. So what's your number four? Uh, because apparently this is coming on ABC in January. Goddamn American Idol is coming back. What the fuck? Right. And I don't want... Did that ever I, leave? Yes. Yeah, it's That's staying dead. It's, it's been off for a couple of years, and I'm just Brian Seacrest is coming back, so he's going to be on TV again. Is Simon Cowell coming Kill back? Me. I don't, I don't well, even know who's the. If we ever get to Vine, I do the same thing. I hate fucking uh, reality TV shows. Yeah. I hate them. I don't care what it is. And American Idol was one of the worst. I don't, I don't like reality the reality talk, like it's not real. Nothing about yeah. this reality. It's all fucking fake. I can do I can do the Gordon Ramsay stuff, and that's about it for reality TV for me. <laughs> cooking shows? No, I, I mean can, like I mean like Hell's Kitchen reality. Talk. I can deal with cooking shows because <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I have a shit sandwich. Sandwich. Oh I can God. deal with cooking shows like that, reality shows, because it's still a a skill. Like I, I, I get scenes of skill. Everyone's skill, but the people that get on this show, they're not fucking picked out of a crowd. No. I blame I blame MTV for the dawn of reality television. Oh, road, road, road rules. Road, 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 road. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the re- <laughs> Are you guys making fun of my bear impression? <laughs> <laughs> You're not even doing it right. First of all, it's claws, not squeezing. It's <laughs> you, were, you were definitely squeezing. <laughs> you guys are dicks. We're all doing this for our enjoyment. No one can see the motion. <laughs> we're just doing a bunch of titty grabbing and grabbing. It's <laughs> not it. It's claws. It's bear claws. You guys are jerks. <laughs> you guys are mean. I hate you. <laughs> so back to road rules. It's road rules and the real world. MTV spawned reality television. I agree. And ruined their own channel in the process. Or there aren't even music television anymore. On there too. The OC. All that crap. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I yeah. But yeah. Existence. Why the hell are you bringing back? For Man. ratings? For what? I I, even though like ratings were terrible. We had the well, fucking voice, like which the, is the same damn thing. Yeah, we've got the voice. They got boring after a while too. Um, there's America's Got Talent. I Does know. it though? Does it? Okay. No, no. England's Got Talent. Not really. Every country's got talent. Then you got the fucking like, what was that acapella show or whatever they did? There's an acapella show? Oh yeah. I am yeah. so in the dark. I don't watch reality TV. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, you shouldn't. It's I, awful. Yeah. I knew somebody who forced me to watch uh, uh, America's uh, what is it, Project Runway. And oh. let me tell you something, man. I want my fucking time back. I, I, I'll say this: when when Survivor came out, I knew then this is fucking bullshit. I don't want to. You're not going to send people into an island. They might die. No, they're not. If somebody had actually died on that show, I would have actually watched exactly. it. Exactly. If you give me a show where people actually are in danger, I'll watch it. <laughs> like an actual Hunger Games that we get to watch. From God, the yes, <laughs> finally. I mean, we're on that, in that direction in this well, country anyway. Hunger Games is a little different because that's a lot of poor people. I feel sad for them. Yeah, if it was rich people's kids going in there, yes. I'd that? watch that yes. Hunger Games. Uh, do the Condemned, that they're all prisoners. Like Stumpel, the one with uh, Stumpel well, Steve Austin. Well, wasn't there like that movie? Um, oh, God. It was like a, it was like a frat. And they, they, they kind of did that. It was like they had like I don't remember the name of it. I remember Battle Royale, which is like a that, Japanese. That was the first thing that popped in my head was Battle Royale. Yeah, and that, that kind of invented the whole like yeah. fighting for your life and if, because of the government. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe that's a, something. Yeah, but yeah, I would gladly watch one percenters fight for the death for my amusement. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> yeah. Just when I thought American American Idol was dead, now it's Brian Fuck that shit. me back on my team. Are you still around? I guess so. I don't he's, know. He, does, he does like he does a satellite radio. No. He does regular radio too. He's he's get, I, still I, has a I career. Don't, I don't need a disc jockey anymore. Like, yeah. give me like. Well, we're doing a podcast. We can't really. <laughs> what do you think? Well, we're yeah, doing? I can because disc jockeys are like, oh, we're gonna play music for you. We, you know, you're here to hear the music. But let me talk <laughs> to you first. Give me your top forty. Right. <laughs> yeah. First of all, Kasem. no, no. First of all, Casey Kasem is the one person you cannot. I'm Casey Kasem, and this is the sound of my audible chocolate. <laughs> Oh, no. Casey Kasem Shaggy. Shaggy. Yes, Casey Kasem is the one. <laughs> Wait, you just said Scooby Doo. Yeah, the same guy. <laughs> no, he did the voice for both of them. No, 
Shut up, he did. No. He oh. don't care. Oh, you were alive back then, you'd know. Hey, Casey Kasem did not do Scooby Doo. I mean, not in the late seventies when that shit was coming out. I was born till eighty two. Sixties. Sixties? Holy shit, Andy, you're that old. You're in the sixties? No. no. Okay. <laughs> you sure? Yes. All right. Yeah, fuck American Idol. Yeah. Get out of here. I don't like but reality. competition reality TV is yeah. even worse. It brings up the-, the only reality show that's competition based that I like, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And then White, uh, White, White, White Belt is yeah. fun. And then the one that White Hulk kind of took off of, which was um, that, oh, the Asian. The MXC. Japanese MXC. version. MXC. Yeah. MXC. MXC. Stream yes. 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 That, that I will watch all day. Matt Mad- 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 Madoriyama. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mad- Madoriyama. Oh. That I will yes. watch because it's fun. Yoko. It's, it's only pretty much people. The voiceovers were hilarious. The voiceovers were hilarious. very funny. And it's pretty much people just going out and ha- trying something for fun. They're not trying to win, like, oh, I'm really going to win this, like, money or whatever. No, they're just going out there to just do it. I'll admit, I do like the first couple, like the first two episodes of the American Idol season because it's the people who are really bad and you get to watch That's their all pain stage, as they get pulled though. out. Isn't this, I guess you're probably right. It is. All right, well, that that's stupid. They should never. They should not be bringing that back either. What's your number three? Uh, I do not want to see twenty four without Kiefer Sutherland. They're bringing that's, back twenty four. Yeah, they did last year, and they're that's dumb. Confession about. time. I never watched the original. I, I love twenty four. So twenty four was a great show. Kiefer Sutherland is perfect, like in that show. So why would you remake it with a kid? That's a different. Yeah. And it's in the same universe, the same too. same realm. Yeah, because they had a couple. Is it his kid? No, no, no. It's someone yeah. completely different. The Reefer Sutherland? No, <laughs> no. It no, is nobody even different. remotely close to him. It's in the same like twenty four world because they had because it had CTU, um, but and it had a couple characters from the original twenty four in it. But like past that, there was no connection to Plus, it, and it just it didn't feel like twenty four. The whole premise of twenty four is amazing because it's real time, which yeah. is awesome. Like. You have a season that's one hour at a time in their world as well. So it's a really cool concept. Great show. Why bring it back if you're not going to bring back the, the premier person? The main it, the main person. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. It's like bringing a Superman movie with no Superman. Right. That's not a Superman movie. That's exactly. just a bunch of right. that, that's literally like a bunch of reporters or, getting like watching buildings getting crumbled around them. Exactly. Or, doing, or, or like doing a James Bond movie, but it's his sidekick. It's like Felix Lighter instead. <laughs> it's Money Penny. Yeah, money, doing yeah. doing taxes and right. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Working That's in the office. It's, it's just I don't I don't get it. And like and last I heard they're they're thinking about doing another another season, but he probably can't come back for it because he's on uh Designated Survivor now, which is a really good show. <clears throat> is he is he he is the president of the United States. But yeah, is he like, Jack he's, Bauer no, he's like no. I'm I've seen this show. He like survives like a mass just like terrorist attack that takes out like almost half of our government. And like in the so he's the last one. In the no, line there because he, he couldn't. Yeah, he's, he's the like, guy who's taken to a bunker in case some shit yeah, goes right. wrong. And shit goes wrong. Yeah, because he's the secretary of the interior. I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's the one that stays stays down just in case, and yeah, that just right. in case happens. Right. And because of yeah, and that happens, and he's now president of the United States. Yeah. So it's a different. Was he thing. in on so it? So instead of. Which, said, no. which kudos for the United, the president of the United States. He is now the president. Which kudos to our government for thinking of that rule in the first place. Yeah, I mean, good rule. Good rule. Someone should. <laughs> Someone should always be around just in case. Right. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, I think like, these days we could probably do with that with a little less uh, less government. Yeah, twenty four is just something I got like super got into like. Coming out, of, coming into high school and all that. So it's just. I need to hear about you coming. <laughs> this was my conversation about it. Didn't watch it. Me Don't either. care. Oh, so if they're doing a remake, it. I'll do the same thing. That show was we'll on Fox, it. right? Won't care. Yeah, that on explains Fox. a lot. I don't watch Fox. Right. Right. Andy, your argument can't be I didn't watch it. Don't care. You don't care. <laughs> Boom. Next. You can literally be like, I watched it. It was you bad. Can, you or can abstain from argument, but yeah. just, you didn't watch it. Doesn't yeah. mean you could, it means you don't get an opinion. That's what I just said. I didn't care. I don't have an opinion either. I just don't. I mean, I, I have an opinion on Kiefer Sutherland. I, I think didn't say it was a good opinion. You can't show. do a show without Kiefer Sutherland. I just said I didn't care. He's a great actor. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I think you should watch it. Give it a chance. It's a good show. It's Lost Boys was great. Lost Boys was great. Lost Boys was great. All right, what are we at to number two? Number two. This goes to this kind of goes back to Roadhouse a little bit. Tell your fans uh, where it's like <laughs> where um, where <laughs> I feel like it doesn't need to be remade, and that's Big Trouble in Little China. What? You cannot remake Big Trouble in Little China. All I thought of. Was, sorry, sorry. All I thought of was 
This one goes out to the one I love. And that song just popped into my head. This one goes out to the one I left behind. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and they should be behind this remake. Continue. <laughs> no, um, apparently there is there is a remake of Big Trouble in Little China in the works, starring The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh yeah, you've got a Funko Pop there. <laughs> Didn't you? Realize that? I was like, what are you, you serious? We don't need a goddamn remake of this movie. These, this is this is these amazing pop, like cult classic one off films so, that. People, we don't need a remake of it. Watch the original. It's there. It exists. This is like Jumanji. Yeah. They re- Oh, my God. I like, yeah. uh, Robin Williams, thank God you're dead. You don't have to see this. Like, the, the, what they're doing to Jumanji is stupid. And it's a video game. Well, it's what, not really a board remake. Games anymore? Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not a remake. You're right. But my, the my, only my, thing that it has in relation to the game. Is, the, the concept and the, the instead of a board game, it's but, a video it's game. Now. But my, 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 my thing is, like he said, we had these originals go watch them. Why on earth would you let your kid nowadays go see the new Jumanji when you still have the old one to show them? They re release old films in the theater all the time. Like it's a really great concept. They're bringing back classic films you can watch them in the theater. You want to have that movie theater experience? Well, go watch an old right. film right now. Currently, as we speak, there are theaters in our town playing Terminator 2. Jason yes, King. yes, they are. Awesome. Like the best Terminator. Yeah, T2 yes, is the best yes, Terminator. Yes. The yes. one has a special place in my one heart. One has that good spot, but two set the bar. This is the music of one. I just like it so much better than two. Anyway, the score. It's, just, it's just not it's just not needed. Like it's so, I think it's so it's just it's a cash grab. Yeah. So big town what's big trouble little China? I almost said big town little trouble. Big, big town <laughs> back in an hour, call the president. So why it's one of those movies that like you said, like why are they remaking it? Like what what are they gonna accomplish from remaking this movie? I mean I think like me said, you know, it's a cash grab maybe, or they're just running out but of I'm sure people still watch it yeah. and buy this movie. I I, I watch it on a semi-regular basis. I love Big Trouble in China. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies. So you think they're going to stick with the same exact plot? Maybe. I don't know. I, I Is like, it The Rock's in it? Who's The Rock playing? Um, oh, my God. Keith Regard, Kurt Russell's character. Oh He's playing Jack Burton. Oh, my Burton. God. So there, I couldn't. I couldn't stop saying wanting to say Jack Pounds. For I love reason. The Rock. I, and I think The Rock is great in a lot of stuff he does. But this is one. I'm like, why would you take why it? Why would you? Yeah. I don't understand it. Wow. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm just uh, okay, that's just an all around agreement. Yeah. And, and number don't do one, it. number one for me, I think, which is an all agreement. Um, one of the probably the most unfunny to me animated shows of all time for me, King of the Hill. Fox's Fox is contacting Mike Judge to do a King of the Hill revival. Honestly, I think the original King of the Hill is not funny. Remake yeah. it and try to do it right. Right. So I'm on board this remake. Maybe they'll do it correctly this time because it wasn't funny the first time. I, I liked King of the Hill for the time being because it was just uh, it was something for me to watch on TV. Like that was it was not like I enjoyed the series or the show, but it came on. I could watch it and like okay, funny a few parts funny. Bobby was funny. The only that thing was it. The only thing I think that's ever made me laugh was the uh, the episode where he's taking karate and it's like that's not my purse. I don't know you. You're right. And there, so that's the thing. It's like there's some funny moments, but again. I have, there was nothing to warrant another rap. I, I have no, no clue how that how that show lasted twelve or thirteen years. No clue. Have you seen America? <sighs> yeah, that show describes eighty <laughs> percent of America. <laughs> Ugh. I think it's that sobering fact is what turned me off of that show. Right. I grew, I grew up in a small town. Damn it, Bobby. Why can't you tie your own shoes, Bobby? Oh, it's because your mom's my sister. I grew up in a small town that was like that. Uh, Had those people. Mm. Those rednecks. How'd you escape? <laughs> yeah. My senior year, all the senior, not my senior year, sorry, my junior year, all the seniors drove their tractors to school. <laughs> what? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> like, I know you're not. And that's why I'm just like, oh. Well, so I, that, when I watch this show, that's like, that's how, that's how, that's how it was so popular for so long is because people actually lived that life. Right. Why bring it back? Again. They'll try to update it, but it just right. it's never it's been just, it's this would be like remaking Goonies as far as I'm concerned, man. Like there's some things that don't you can't need to be remade. They're sacred 
parts of our childhood, sacred parts of our pop culture that should be just left alone. And they already stand great on their own two feet. They don't need you to try to improve on it because you're just going to fuck it up. There are so many better comedy animated shows out there that King of the Hill would not even crack my interest to yeah. want to watch. Is there any... Bring back Futurama for a third time. Is, is there <laughs> any thing out there right now? Anybody, movie, show story that you would want to see remade remade or yeah. like sequeled either one okay i love the original star uh, paul verhoeven starship troopers absolutely but there are many many things that are missing from the movie that are in the books that i want to see in the movie they did now, do sequels that were they did awful. Do sequels and the third one was as close as they could get with marauder because it had casper van dean back well yeah that jawline <clears throat> I have no problem with the casting of Starship Troopers. Casper Van Dien, the rest of them, fucking flawless. It's a great movie. Right. If you hate on Starship Troopers, you have no taste. No. But it didn't have, like, the mech suits shower that are in scene. the books. It didn't have the mech suits. Yeah, co-ed showers in the military. High five! Um, the no, no mech suits in the military. Uh, it's, it's, it's missing some things. So if you remade Starship Troopers, I'd be cool with that. But if you did it more like the book. Okay. So one for me that I they did, they did remake that I like was Judge Dredd. Oh, Dread 3D is amazing. I absolutely love the remake of Judge Dread. Dread 3D, 3D was amazing. It was way better than Stallone's Dread. Yeah, because you didn't have to take, it was to the comic. Like, you didn't take his helmet off. He was. You never see Carl Urban's face. Yeah, it was essentially the epitome of what that comic was. Yeah. No, I'm cool with that. No, yeah. I agree. Like, I'm yeah, really, that's, yeah. Great. That's, a, that's a good I'm, remake. Yeah. They aren't all Dread 3D, though. Dread's a, yeah. That's an exception. Dread, Dread was great. I think my favorite remake was probably Dawn of the Dead. To yeah. me, that was the original well, is amazing, and the remake was that a made remake or own. was it, did they do it like an edition? No, no it's, it's a remake. remake. Okay. Zack Snyder completely okay. remade the film. Yeah, and uh -huh. it's great. Yeah, there's no there's no fast running zombies in the original George Romero one. Right, right, right. Um, and no zombie baby. Right. Um. My th mine because we were just talking about this last week at my work. Uh, my thing would be I would like to see a gritty like noir Dick Tracy movie. Huh. And like I like the Warren Beatty one from like eighty nine or ninety or whenever that came out. That was great. But like it's very like it's it's. Um, Madonna's terrible acting queefs all over that script. Sure. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good movie all on its own, but it's not as like brutal as it could be because if you go back to those old comic strips like. Villains die from being impaled on a on a on a flagpole, <laughs> like stuff like that. So, like a uh, Boardwalk Empire, Dick Tracy. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I'd see that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for, okay, for your input there. I'm not a. All right, all right, all right. I'm not a Dick Tracy fan, and oh, like, okay. how can you not be a Dick Tracy fan? Out, I don't know. Out, I just they came out recently with the hard covers of all of yeah, the. Yeah. That Come on, not, Copper. That was not Dick Tracy. That was not Dick Tracy at all. They came out with hard Did you watch the Warren Beatty? And they're great. Yeah, did you I watch saw, the Warren Beatty? I, I, I did. That, that, like I, a that was my, I was a kid. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. I watched oh, that yeah. over and over and over. I yeah. loved it. It's like Roger that's Rabbit. Of, it was like Dick Tracy or Roger that's Rabbit. That's one of the first movies I ever saw in the theater was Dick Tracy. <laughs> so so what was, year did it come out? I'd say 89 or 90. I think it was. I thought it was right around... When the 89 Batman movie came out. I think out. it was. And it was like, do I want to watch Batman for the 100th time? Or do I want to watch Dick Tracy? And it was always Batman. Unless it's because oh, you're a freak. It's because you're... Uh, it's because you have you a part on for... That movie was awesome. And Tracy it still is awesome. That's There's you one know. that I would have thrown in your list that wasn't there, Tim. And that was the Footloose remake. That never should have happened. I forgot. It should always be I Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Should, yeah, it should always be Kevin Bacon. They did a modernized, and if you, I've actually watched this remake of this film, and it is almost line for line, shot for shot, a big facsimile of the original Footloose with new, just different actors, and it's modern times. I actually it. forgot that, that came out. Oh, and another remake that I love, and this might, I don't know, a lot of people go both, they, they can go both ways, the Halloween remake. The Rob Zombie Halloween, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. I have not seen that yet. I loved it. I thought it was a great remake. They actually get to more detail on the Michael Myers backstory. It was amazing. Oh, I knew a movie that was an amazing remake that was way better than the original. Lost it? I lost it. There was a good. There was a movie I watched, 
And I was like, this is actually better than the original. And now I can't. It's killing me inside. Oh, True Grit. Uh, True Grit. Oh, man, that's so much better. The Coen Brothers remake yeah. of True Grit is fucking flawless. It is an amazing film, both in writing and cinematography, the acting. Fucking Matt Damon, man. Like, I hate you in so many things, but I did not hate you at all in this movie. <laughs> Matt Damon. I think Did Jeff Bridges is a better Rooster Cogburn than John Wayne. Yeah. Jeff Bridges oh, is a better anything to everything. This is yeah. true. Yes. As long as Jeff Bridges is there, it's fine. So sometimes remakes can work out in for the for the betterment of a film, but it requires the Coen Brothers was, and Jeff Bridges. Was Hateful right. Eight a remake? Or no, was that, that a remake? Is a Tarantino okay. original. Okay. 310 to Yuma. I think a lot of those Westerns, oh, yeah. because of the time frame that has elapsed to allow them, I think what we hate the most are remakes of stuff that is only... 10, 15, 20 years old. It's like you haven't given it that time to... Well, and I also think, too, I feel like a lot of film directors or TV show makers are lazy these days. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, what made us money before? Right. Let's just do it again. Right. And I'm like, you, there are so many new ideas that you haven't found yet. Go do that. You know, like, no offense to the Orville coming out. Like, the Orville, is, it looks funny. You know, I actually can't wait to watch yeah. it. Yeah. It, it, I think it's a great... It might be funny because it, it has... Um, Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane, who does great stuff. Yeah. But it's not a premise off of stuff we've already seen. Space travel. I mean, the whole Star Trek series has already done that. Not, and then and, and, uh, Galaxy Quest did the comedy version of it. Yeah. Like, it's already been done. Like, give, and I get, maybe there's like, there's only a, you know, a finite amount of options you have. I feel like people are just mailing it in. They're like, oh, let's just do what this this worked back in the eighties. Let's try it again. It's a lot harder these days to write a brand new script and get a, a, a a film, a, a production company to sign off on a brand new idea because they're taking a massive risk, and they all all somebody has to do is come in. It's like, hey, let's remake this film, and the and all these like short sighted, like two dimensional morons running these companies are going, oh yeah, that'll work, and it's cheaper because we already have a script ready for us to go. Right. Well, and then here's also a great example of two of like go go to storytelling, go to books. There's they so many. Are. They are. Look at Harry Potter, man. Right. Like well, all movies are I mean, books even now. older. Like, look at, you know, like Tolkien, you know, stuff like that. Like, go to the older books and you can remake that stuff and do well. You know, I, mean, I know George R.R. R. Martin isn't that old, but look what they've done with Game of Thrones. You know, they gave I, an audience, and this is, this is the only reason I say this is because a lot of people don't like to read. <laughs> it's just, that's a fact. It's true. So if you give them a great story on film of a great book, Yes, you don't have to think of anything new, but you're going to have a much better plot than trying to rehash something. <sighs> I, I just think, unfortunately, this is the state of affairs. It's remakes, remakes, remakes. Yeah, and it has been. I, I, I'm with him on this one. I think that there's... I mean, I'm sure oh, this list could probably go on for a century. But. You know what you missed that I would have bashed on? What's that? With every ounce of my being? Oh, God. The Turtles. Remake of the fucking Ninja Turtles. Michael Bay shits uh, and ruins everything he touches. He's like the opposite yeah. of the Midas touch. Like, Instead of gold, it just turns to poop. The original two. Third one, a little weird. Whatever. Yeah. Um, you remade those, that ruined everything. Like, I hate I hate the new tr the, Turtles. The only reason that Everyone I does. did not include the Turtles is because I haven't seen either of the movies. They're garbage. They're Don't worry, you're, you're fine. Like, yeah. look, just enjoy the yeah, ones. you're not the, missing anything. Just, the originals are great, man. They're even close to the Eastman and Laird comics. I mean, they're like a little bit of modernization, with, but they're but they're dark. It's darky. It's dark, It's gritty. It's violent. It's well, good. That, Babies. Well, that, That's well, secret news. That, <laughs> that and that has already happened. I was talking about upcoming ones. Sure, sure. Uh, I agree. They're making more. No, no turtles. No, he's, he's saying his list was upcoming. upcoming. Uh, yeah, no, ones I'm with you. Turtles, even though the no, 24 remake. Everything on your list, I'm, in, I'm mostly in fear of. You're right. Yeah. I just don't know about 24. Even but though yeah, the 24 remake already happened. I'm with you on that, though. So, um, All right, well, you got me on that. All right. Touche. So, <laughs> See? So, Sweeney. Uh, <laughs> what? What are you hating on these days? A lot. Well, hit me with it, bro. So, everyone's had a theme a little bit so far. Um, yours was comic characters. Mm-hmm. His was, you know, remakes. TV, movies. Um, mine, I, I, I kind of go off a little bit more, and I kind of just came up with stuff that I hate. Because, <laughs> for the hateful geeks, right? Sure. These are so, things that you feel are overrated. Know, so, so, start off with some TV shows that I hate. Overrated, have a big following, um, that are still current, still go on. I don't like them. Family Guy. I fucking hate Family Guy. They overplay it. 
<laughs> they they force down comic stuff that doesn't make sense. They always have changing stories. I just don't like it. I, I, I get it. It's some stuff's funny. It was funny the first two seasons. <laughs> yeah, the two seasons. Say, like I, I, I can agree. With Old you Family Guy seconds. was awesome. Yeah, that was hysterical. That was fun. Okay. I think after their Star Wars uh, episodes, after that, it, it did start to yeah. go down. Same of the Simpsons after it Absolutely. Movie, the movie, it started two, to go down. The first but two, you're taking my stuff. Peter Griffin, <laughs> Peter Griffin to me is w- one of the best. Uh, no, no. Animated characters. Real life Peter Griffin is funny as fuck. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, look him up. There is a real life... Yeah, the cosplayer. <laughs> There's a cosplayer. Goes to cons. Talks like Peter Griffin. Looks like Peter Griffin. Fucking hysterical. But yeah, Family Guy. Everyone loves it. Everyone talks about it all the damn time. It's I hate it. I'm going with South Park's opinion on Family Guy in this one, man. You can't just do some random ass joke in the middle of an episode that has a, that sort of has a plot. And then like call it. It's it's not it's not part of the story. It does, it doesn't flow. It's just random like rim shots left and right. right. And it's not clever. The formula. It's it's literally written by manatees. It's boring. I'm done. I haven't I haven't been in a Family Guy since since yes, yeah, since Andy said like since the and the Blue Harvest. You know what the funniest part of Family Guys are? The little flashback scenes they do. Yeah, which is what I'm talking about. The formula. Yeah, bullshit, that's Mando it. Crab. And they need to learn to quit. Like, okay. Peter bumped his knee. I don't need to hear him say that <sighs> fucking noise 18 times in a row. What's the, one, what's the one where like a bird hits the window and he's trying to like scrape it up with like a plate or something yeah. like that? Fuck that joke. It just the keeps chicken fights that take 20 minutes. Right. They just overplay it. It's the, too much. The Conway Twitty. It was uh, funny when they're like, but, ladies and gentlemen, Conway Twitty. And it was like 10 seconds of it. A few episodes later, they're still doing it and they did an entire music video. I changed the channel, came back like three minutes later. And it's still doing it. I'm yeah. like, it's, it's like, not funny. And I like Seth the Carlin. Yeah. I like him. I like Ted. I think Ted's fucking hysterical. Ted 2 was even good. Yes. He's a he's a funny person. He is a funny guy. But when they, I don't know who. But is he a family guy? Is it Seth Green that does it with him? Or who does yeah, it with Seth him? Seth Green Seth and Green Mila Kunis. And, and uh, I can't, I'm drawing a blank on her name. I mean, like, directs it or like. Oh, um. Uh, Alex Borstein. Yeah. Alex Borstein. That's, yeah. that's Lois, yeah. It, it's like one of those things, it's like, just stop. Like, yeah, like old Family Guy's great in the first like two to three seasons when it came back was was real good, and then now, like I mean, a couple of a couple of my favorite episodes are are when it came back, like um, like uh, Peace Hearted and um the one where I can't think of what it's called, but the one where Chris joins the uh, I, I can't I I, I want to say Salvation Army, but that, I know that's not it, but because he's a because he's a freshman. Oh yeah, he goes, uh, he goes the Peace Corps. Peace Corps. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and that being said, yeah. there are funny references. There are funny moments. A lot of musical moments in that show. A lot show. of and musical Andy, moments. Andy, don't you hate musicals? I hate musicals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's overrated as fuck. Yeah. It needs to stop. I will say now it is, yeah. yeah it's ready to... It, it's done. Oh, it, Simpsons, too. The one, the one episode where I was like, okay, this really isn't funny anymore, is to me anymore, is the one where... Uh, Stewie and Brian were were locked in the bank vault for like. I, I think I've said this exact same and I'm thing. Just like, like that, that was the episode where I was like, I, I'm, I. This isn't really funny to me. Anymore. Brian's like suicidal, and Stewie's vomiting, and it's like not even funny. And it's like Seth MacFarlane basically like outing his own inner demons well, yeah. through these two characters. Brian has and to like eat Stewie's shit. It's nah. just awful. It's just not funny, and it's gross, and it, it wasn't think, even clever. I think their peak that those two characters interacting together, their peak was when Stewie got drunk. <laughs> and he walks up to Brian and says, "You're sexy. Yeah, and you're drunk. You're I, not, I that was like the peak. I like when Stewie got on steroids and like beat the crap out of Brian. Played out kind of weird. Got, like away from him wanting to kill Lois and take over the world. Right. And that was fun. That was yeah. fun, Stewie. Yeah, he did kind of just give up on that whole thing, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't there an episode where he actually succeeded, or at least thought he did? Uh, there was an, there was a two parter where he succeeded and like took over the country and like Lois. Like didn't die, and then it was all a uh, uh, it was all, reality. Yeah, it was all he had, he had a simulator on. Good, yeah, that's another thing. Like, yeah, okay, so we can all agree, Family Guy is Samson's dead. It move on. <laughs> yeah. So sticking with TV, I guess I'll maybe theme it out a little bit here. Uh, Bob's Burgers. I'm not a fan. Never been a fan. I tried to watch it, um, and it's not even the basic argument a lot of people use where they see Archer when they hear Bob. I love H. John Benjamin. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a great voice. His voice is amazing. Um, I just don't think it's funny. 
it's a weird show. I don't like the kids. I don't really care about the premise. And it's just another, well, it's that same family yeah. f- of fuck ups formula that Simpsons invented. Or didn't he, not even, he didn't even invent it. Friggin' the Archie Bunker and all that crap. Right. Like, that's they, been around since the 30s. They took the, they took the sitcom, sitcom again, another family sitcom again, and made it, you know, have issues. And they, they have funny quirks here and there. And again, moments are funny. But the show overall, so, I, lo- I like Bob's Burgers because the kids are all unique. They all have their unique personalities. They're all hilarious. And then Bob brings in that that dry humor, that adult that's a, dry humor. So, like, so I love dry humor. So there, there's a boy, right? The kids, there's a boy and Eugene. two girls, right? Yeah. There's a boy and two girls. Yes. And there's a mom and a dad, right? Do they have a dog? No. And a cat? Perhaps? No. No? I don't think they have either. Oh, no. no. Okay, so that's the only difference between them and the fucking they're, Simpsons. They're, they're aunt and she does art and she has an animal butthole. I've seen the animal uh, butthole it's, episode. It's, that's hilarious. From like Bill, seeing Bill, it on Adult Swim. It's made. I just, from, from seeing it on Adult Swim when I go to bed, like it's it's starting to somewhat grow on me, but it's not something that I've gone to and be like, I'm going to start watching the new episodes or I'm going to go on Netflix to, right. to, to watch it. And so like I said, it's one of those things that happens on, I might see an episode, laugh at a few moments, but it would be never something I seek out thinking, right. I'm going to yeah. watch this. No, I don't either. No I, right. I like watching it's it. It's the same premise I've had since I was a child and watched Simpsons on Fox. It's the same damn thing. And yeah, it was funny for a while. But again, talk about rehashing, talk about remakes. It's the same damn thing. Tired of that shit, man. Family Guy did it. Simpsons did it. Now we have Bob Burgers. Flintstones did it. Flintstones. I mean, every fucking child. I get you have to have a family most of the time. It's going to be this, you know, comic, comedical interaction. I'm done with it. I'm with you, man. No, no, screw it. All right. So, number three, I'll stick with TV. I have some others I could talk about, but I've already done TV so far. I'll stick with it. American Horror Story. I like American Horror Story. I enjoy American Horror Story. I've never felt more uncomfortable watching a show in my entire life. Isn't that the point? And I've watched weird porn. Um, Whoa. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't don't like the premise. I don't think it's interesting. I think it's boring. And I feel dirty after watching it. I mean, I I will say, like, some seasons have not been great. Am I... Yeah, but, like, in my opinion, it's like watching a snuff film. I don't want to watch it. Well, first uh, of all, first season Ghost House was a great one. Ghost House is great. That which was the only one, one I tried to Coven, watch. the witch one was really was, good. I Third like one, Coven. Coven was really good, I and Asylum was second. awesome too. Asylum, Asylum, and Roanoke are my favorite. I, I didn't, didn't like Roanoke. Roanoke. Wasn't Roanoke. there a hotel? That hotel was the most was recent with Lady Gaga. Okay, hotel I just, was terrible. I think it's dumb. I've only seen the first one. Best sex it ever has, but thanks to American Horror Story. And I'll premise this like I'm not a fan of horror films in general because I have a lot of anxiety to begin with right. um, but like I just don't like the premise I don't think it's interesting nothing brings to the, anything to the table I don't feel like there's a big plot to it I feel like they're just trying to see what they can do To it's like it's like gore porn they're trying to see what they can do to make you feel uncomfortable and to me that's boring it's they like, succeed okay, cool. sometimes though I mean right, like, right. like so right. The, for example the first Saw great yeah. love the first Saw thought it was fun thought it was a great premise or the idea behind it Every other one, how many they make? Like six, There's seven been a of them. Lot of Saw seven starts in September. Gore Saw. Oh, Saw. Saw. Yeah. Six. Gore porn. They're trying to make see what they could do, how they could top the last one, make you uncomfortable over and over again. I just like the fact that it's the same actors every uh-huh. season, but in completely different roles, taking on different it's stories. A different plot every season. And I like that. I think it's serial and it's um, interesting and it's pulpy. And that could be I could get I could get behind that, the idea behind that. The rest of it, uncomfortable. Doesn't make I mean, sense to me. It. I can get it if you don't like horror, but like I, I enjoy horror. But I like, I do like some horror. And I, I, I said, I said I don't like horror because it does make me feel overall generally anxious. And yeah. I have a lot of anxiety about it. That's mostly just because I don't like things to pop out at me, bothers me. Right. This, I was literally turned it off in the middle of one episode because I was like, I feel like I'm watching a snuff film. I feel like it's dirty. There's I a feel... couple times where it takes it to... Oh, was it the Gim suit of the yeah, season? Yeah, I just don't like it. Gim suit. Yeah. I mean, they've only done the Gim suit. Gim suit would do that to you. Um, that and the old the maid that was like a really an old, old witch or whatever. Oh, yeah, that was like young. Or, that she yeah, looked young. And then oh, they yeah. showed her actually like being old and doing something. No, I don't like um, it. I don't like it. I See, like, Asylum was real good. I enjoyed... Zachary Quinto was really good in that yeah. season. Um... And I, I like I said, I enjoy it, but I like horror stuff, and it didn't really. I sometimes like I think it's good horror if it if it makes me go oh. Some of the seasons have been hit or miss. Yeah, I mean it's not a perfect show, but the, there's at least a couple seasons in there that are really worth a watch. Right. 
I just I can't get behind. You don't like, you don't like Ghost House. I get it. You don't like Murder House. No, I don't. That's fine. But maybe try out try the third season Coven or try Asylum. You might like those better. I've, I've had some my, of them are less horror-y and more like mystery, murder mystery. And then some I mean, are like even, more supernatural. Even like, even like Asylum kind of. And I like supernatural much. stuff. Almost I mean, yeah. Like yeah. I remember as a kid watching Poltergeist. Like that fucking movie scared the shit out of me. It did. And, and it was still it. a good movie. It was still a good thing to watch. Okay, I think you're focusing only on the first season too much. And I get, but I get that. But that's what he's saying. But, but I, get I can't get through it. I, if I can't get through it, why am I going to go back and watch it again? Well, well don't watch well, the first well, season. Well, watch well, a different well, season. They're a whole different story. Is, yeah, what he's saying is each season is a different story. Okay. So give season two, give give season two a shot. Give Asylum a shot. Give Covenant a shot. They're just completely give different free, characters. The back is the same, but the characters are completely different. The plot is completely different. None of them are intertwined. They're, each season but is But is it all just the same premise of gore porn? They just want to try to make that's, you... That's, no, no, they're not, though. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Like, some of the other seasons well, aren't like that. I can try to give it a shot. I can try to watch the other, the other seasons, but I can tell you 100%, I literally... Like, had turned off. Like, it was, like, I'll, I'll was I'll done. Give you for instance, like last season was Roanoke. Yeah, and it started off as like was there was banjos, like, the river. No, so it's Roanoke, off, like, they, is, like the Virginia town. I know. I know. So like it started off as like a kind of like an A and E like Mike goes documentary like, documentary thing, and then kind of go and then oh it goes god paranormal. they use handicam, but then it, but then it goes paranormal activity. They go handicam. Yeah, I fucking hate handy cams. All right, don't go road out. Well, no I, I think that I think Asylum would be up your alley. Asylum, like yeah. the Blair Witch Project, maybe entirely stick to my stomach. Based on the Asylum is like a Asylum. really um, is like an amazing multi generational murder mystery. Okay. It's really good. So is it based off of actual like a same Asylum? I think some of these stories. I think they got the stories from maybe an actual uh, uh, American Horror Story that, pulls its actual plots from because I, I, I can get behind like I, we're in Ohio. We have the Mansfield Reformatory. Shawshank. One of the most yeah. haunted, right. you know, reformatories in the world. Have you been up there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not it's haunted. Gone up it's there. Not, it's not haunted. It's full of pretentious douchebags every Halloween. Right. Well, I don't, I, I don't go up there during Halloween, but you actually can't go up there and spend the night any time during the year. Yeah, I went there um, in May. And it's creepy as fuck. Yeah. It's yeah. creepy. It's I mean, really creepy when somebody puts a bladeless chainsaw. Don't touch me, kid. Don't touch me. Yeah, that, I don't, that's not the, whatever. But it's still like, it, it's a cool place. A lot of people died there. A lot of people were not really well in the mind, and it's a creepy right. place to walk into. It has a really eerie feeling to it. Um, that's what I can get behind. So maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll try it. But other stuff, it was just I, enough. I, I can enough. See, from what I remember, because it's been a while since I've watched Murder House, I can see where you're coming from. And where it's like, uh, it's and the people that come up with this stuff, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Like what is in your head right now that you think this no, is I'm like? I'm telling you, man. Like the seasons and the stories are pulled from like actual like reports of like quote unquote supernatural happenings. Anybody can make that shit. Up, I'm sure they can, but I'm not. I'm saying they, no, nobody sat there and says, "Man, I don't really like to talk about like a serial killer in an asylum." I'm just. Yeah, gonna I think don't know. That. And, they might. And like, this season, this season, it's called Cult, and it starts off. Ugh. Apparently, it starts at the day of the election. Last year, of course it does. Well, that makes sense. I know. Oh, oh it, uh, in the opening credits, there's a creepy shirtless dude just putting on a Donald Trump mask and looking in the camera, and it's kind of it's real creepy. Oh god, yeah. I, You're I, not making me want to watch this show anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest. That's I, not. Uh, I haven't watched it since Coven. Because I don't really, because like I said, each season has a premise, and most of them I haven't really liked. I, I didn't care about Roanoke. Yeah, I don't care about Hotel. Yeah, I don't tell. I saw The Shining. I get it. I I, I don't want to see cult either because those people don't deserve to be oh, glorified gosh. in television um but i like coven i like asylum and i like murder house okay i mean i'll, I'll try I mean, again I can, maybe i can rephrase it it's like a no, cult don't do like it. it's it's like it's signal from the election or something that's how the call is not a republican call it's not a tea party call thanks andy for your input i agree with you this show no, I, never did. Watched I, I watched the first season I didn't even finish it i i think i got like episode seven or eight in and i was just like um, not interested. I, yeah. See, I, I I enjoy American Horror Story a bit, quite a bit. And I like supernatural stuff. And I like you know those those premises of, of real life stories and how they reenact them. And that's awesome. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. This one, I feel like they were just trying so hard to push whatever uncomfortable thing on the audience they could that they forgot about the entire story that it came from. Gimp suits are hard for a lot of people to swallow. I know I don't wear mine very often. It's difficult <laughs> for people to accept in public. What's your uh, what's your number two? So number two, um, I, I'm going to kind of to stray away from the TV. Um, so I, I kind of already mentioned my other one, which is all reality TV shows, period. Um, we kind of went over that one a lot. So uh, the, this one, I, I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of 
Frack for? We'll see. Um, Did you say frack? Yeah. Frack. We're going to frack. Are we fracking? Maybe. No fracking allowed. Um, I'm going to give you some flack, though. Whatever. Same word. I don't <laughs> care anymore. It's late. Um, Harry Potter. Um, I think Harry Potter in general, because the villain is fucking stupid. Dude, this fucking guy. You better hope my wife doesn't fucking hear this episode. That's, I mean, she can talk. I'll talk to her about it and I'll, I'll give her my input too. But the villain's fucking stupid. The guy can't even take over a damn high school. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with people <laughs> that a villain is so demonstrative that he can't say his name? He's Laura, just Laura, tra- okay, he can't even take over a high school. Okay, have you read the kids. books? Have you read the books? Yes. Okay, you have. Yes. Interesting. So, Lord Voldemort is incapable of seeing his own flaws. He's one of these types of leaders that's so up his own butt oh. that he doesn't like see how he could possibly ever make a mistake. It's so, so yeah. metaphorical. Well, I mean, it's, he's uh, obviously the wizard Hitler, so it is. The right. Thing. Exactly. I got the movie three and stopped. I was bored. Now, I will say this. I like, I do like to watch it. I like to see what they do with the magic, and it's fun. It's a great little, fun little whatever. I love the, I love whatever Harry whatever Potter mythos. It. It's amazing. Um, I think the mythos could have been great. J.K. Rowling could have been like, you know, great. Give him a good villain. I think that Voldemort as a villain is a little mustache twirly at times. I can see that. I think in the movie, we saw him kill one person. But I think really the villain here is intolerant. That's all seven movies. One person. There's eight movies. Eight. Sorry. Eight movies. Eight movies. He Just killed one person. Eight movies. So How is that threatening? He killed a lot more than one no, person. No, he didn't. Everybody else around him did. He killed, what's his face? Um, Twilight Boy. He killed Cedric Diggory. Yeah. And that was in Cut Goblet of Fire. That was the only person he also kills him. He, he also kills Charity Burbage in the beginning of Deathly Hallows. Didn't he? Feeds her in Nagini. Didn't he, didn't he kill... His, his yeah, they don't he show killed, that. Yeah, though. they show him in flashback. He literally had vodka they daughters, both, they both of the see potters. It. It's a flash of the baby's face. That's all I'm saying is they literally make this big villain that you can't even say his name because he's so bad. He's so big and bad. Like, there, actually, there's a I know. reason in the book you, you can't say his name. You you say his name. No. No, Mr. I barely read these damn books. They actually use a spell that when anyone actually says his name, they have a tracer on them and they can find them because only people that are not afraid of Lord Voldemort would say his name outright. And that's how they track people down who are like rebels against the Death Eater cause. Fuck. Still, Fucking muggles, man. Still bad. Still. I, I, and the, Okay, you. it's pretty much like <laughs> it's pretty much like you said it's like Hitler for high school I yeah, mean he believes in pure blood uh, magical ancestry and doesn't want uh, half bloods and, or muggle to it, practice and we can even touch on the movies themselves how they do not even talk about half the stuff in the books that were like, so good. amazing like the horror crooks how you actually have to make a horror crooks and what you actually have to do to like cannibalism you have to eat somebody you, eat someone. you actually don't have to eat somebody there's a spell you cast when you commit murder and it splits your soul where right. the fuck no, are you guys no, getting this no, shit from no that is the spell but there is actually a mention of it of cannibal to actually you have to commit a crime so foul it's unspeakable. It's murder. No, it's not. To... They speak of murder. I literally have read these books within the last I three know. weeks. I have a problem. I, know. I have a wife who is super obsessed with Harry Potter, but they and speak. I got dragged into it. They speak of murder. They don't speak. Not, cannibalism has nothing you to have, do with it. it. Literally, there is a theory out there, and it actually, it's a theory. JK it's not Rowling in the books. proved it and said it was right. Oh, I, I haven't read the book since the last. It's not in the books. It's not in the books. But J.K. Rowling said it is accurate. This theory came out, and she said it is accurate. That to actually create a horror crux, you actually have to be, be commit a crime so unspeakable. And it was cannibalism. Wrong. Because when he kills the Potters and he gets the spell backfired on him and makes Harry the seventh and unwanted horror crux, he doesn't eat shit. Literally, he dies. Well, his body does and his right. spirit goes on. No cannibalism took place. Read the book. That's why the spell <laughs> didn't work. He became he made a horror crux. Right. But it didn't, it ruined him. No, that's not what ruined him. Saying, Harry's mother, Lily, created a spell that protected... It was love. It was, no, it was it an was actual love. ancient spell that protected <laughs> Harry from the Avada Kedavra Again, killing curse. All this stuff you is fucking epic. muggles make these damn arguments you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Humph. <laughs> mine, is even, mine is even more superficial. I saw the first Harry Potter in the theaters and I was like, this is cool. 
oh, that's a cool looking troll that's coming out of the bathrooms. Oh, look, this is cool, like magic and everything. And then I was like, the second movie, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's still Chamber a cool secrets. concept. And then Lord of the Rings comes out, and there's the cave troll. And I was like, that looks way fucking cooler. Really? You just like the cave troll? <laughs> I was like, Gandalf is way cooler than Harry Potter. Oh, my Fuck God. Fuck Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings is better. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I, I actually I actually enjoy the last, was the last four movies, because they changed directors. And it was much more dark. It was much more like people dying and actually like went to like an actual part of the books where they actually got dark. I, I, I like that. David Yates took over uh, for Prisoner of Azkaban yes. and that's when the actual geography of Hogwarts in the films became stationary and like didn't change the rest of the movies right. too. Which is good because the school has a layout it shouldn't change. Right. But And that's also when Michael Gambon took on the role of Dumbledore because uh, what's his face? He passed away. Uh, passed away. Uh, his name I can't remember. I'm sorry. But no, yeah, I think David Yates taking the helm made the films better but there's still shit missing. I just think I, I, we but it's not overrated. I think it is amazeballs. overrated. A little bit because I think we've all talked about villains make the story. And I just felt like now in the books, I felt Voldemort was a pretty good villain. I felt like he was portrayed a little more pansy than he could have been. He could have been much more dark. He could have been much more like malicious and threatening the whole time. I just felt like he kind of danced around the subject. A lot. I think movie Voldemort is not nearly as like outright murderous as right. book Voldemort. Right. I'll give you that, but Ray Fiennes is a good actor. Oh, absolutely. And nothing against the actor. But how they handle him in script and on film for the movie adaptations was wrong. I agree. But th that's the problem is a lot of fans of the Potter series don't like the movies because of its right. divergence from the books. I, I just I just felt like, well, the hero, first of all, I felt like they, and even in the books, his path changed so much. It wasn't regular to one person. I just felt like he was all over the place all the damn time about everything. What, Harry Potter? Yeah. Can you give me an example? Um, it's kind of like, what's, I don't know what I'm trying to think of. Um, I don't know, this is, it's not, I don't know, it's not a hero, but it's like he doesn't want to be the hero. Nobody wants to in that situation. You got forced to, your parents were fucking murdered when you were a baby, and now you're being forced to become like the magical but, savior of the world. You're the chosen one. But then eventually Batman. he just, it just eventually just happens and he's fine with it. That's my problem. Well, it's he like, kind of accepts that he has no choice. But they don't ever really discuss that. It just really is like a, a switch flips. And it just bothers me. It's like you get this innocent kid, yes. And he was forced upon this. All of a sudden he has, like you said, he is a horror crooks and he has to die. He realizes he has to die. And you you had this torture on this per, this young being this whole time through his adolescence. And then switch, he's fine with it. I think it was Dumbledore's death. Oops, spoilers. Oh my god. <laughs> you don't know the fucking end of this I, movie right now. I think it was Dumbledore's death and the realization that the Horcrux were there that really put, flipped the switch. He knew uh, by by Order of the Phoenix that he was part of the prof prophecy that only one, neither can survive while the other one lives. Right. But I don't think he really accepted his total responsibility for it till he was alone. That's not... An you know, all these people protecting him. And then his owl gets... When, okay, so what, you know when his, his owl, owl gets... Yeah, yeah. Owl, his owl headwig represents his childhood, right. his innocence. And when his owl dies at the Deathly Hollows, is kind of and fucked And you just at touched on another, another problem I have. Every fucking fan you run into has another fan theory about what means what and whatever inside this movie, book, whatever. I mean... And it's all over the damn place. Everyone like... like there, there's a fan theory that Dumbledore is death. There's a fan theory that um, the master of the Deathly Hollows. He yeah, could have been. That he is death. There was in the a point story. In the time and that the, the story Dumbledore of the three, three, the three brothers, Hollows. the three brothers, and Harry's one, Dumbledore's one, and Snape is one, and Dumbledore is death. And then Harry was the next master of all three Deathly Hollows, and also a blood lineage of the Peverells. So I mean, yeah, there, there's a, the cool thing. That's what I love about Harry Potter, though. A lot of the things you're upset about are things that really make it good. There's a huge, uh, like, massive, complicated mythos with all this, like, open-ended ideas that people can look at it and make their and, own decision. And you, I can actually have an argue with. Most Harry Potter fans are all these childish little, like, I love... I love magic and it's so whimsical and fun. Whatever, man. The only curses I remember are the fucking forbidden right. ones. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, Avada Kedavra, that, Crucio. I, that I can argue with. That I can have fun with. Every, all the other fans that are just like, oh, it looked pretty. Shut the fuck up. Like, give me a good plot. Give me a good story. Give me good characters like yeah. she did instead of like this like 
portrayal of high school students that's like Degrassi with magic. So one of the biggest problems with the movies is that the is the actual history and background of Voldemort, how he came to be. Yeah. It's barely touched on. This is Half Blood Prince. Half Blood Prince is the book. Talk about Tom Riddle like once, like maybe twice, yeah. if that. But Half Blood Prince is the huge book where Dumbledore and Harry look through memories in the Pensieve of everything Dumbledore's collected on where Voldemort came from and how he rose to power, trying to find a clue and how to kill him. And there's way more shit in that book than the movies ever have. They talk about Voldemort's real family, his mother, who his father was, his sick, inbred, slithering, hillbilly magic family that don't believe in yeah, like you got A's interest right there. Yeah, like they're they're like all about like <laughs> pure blood breeding right. and not breeding with muggles. Oh, yeah. They're like super hillbilly. Well, it's like Malfoy's make fun of not make fun of they look, they look down on Hermione because she's a mugblood. She is a muggle born and yeah. muggle born magic users. The way Voldemort looks at it, it's like they stole their magic right. ability from magical people. And so, so he's magic. So maybe I can flip my hate to the cinema version of Harry Potter. I would accept that. That is an acceptable portrayal. Because but the mythos itself is not overrated. The fan Well, the mythos is has been done in every obsessed. sci-fi film, period. Star Wars, Harry Potter. I mean, you can line them up pretty much verbatim. Sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, even, even massive fans I mean, of the books have I wouldn't huge have problems with the movies. I wouldn't have been surprised at the end of the whole where it said, I, mean, I am your father. I mean, I, yeah. it would have been, you know. They actually yeah. technically are related. Right. Snape's family come, so you remember the tale of the three brothers? Yes. Snape, Voldemort, uh, who's Tom Riddle, and Harry Potter, each of them are descended from each brother. Right. And they're different lines. Yeah. Uh, Voldemort is uh, directly descended from the brother who had the Elder Wand. Snape is the uh, Resurrection Stone. And Harry's uh, the obviously cloak. the, the cloak yeah, brother. Because he gets the cloak from his sure. father. <laughs> and it was handed down through their families. Right. So, I like that neither of these two are even talking about this whatsoever. You're not Potter fans, <laughs> are you? No, I'm not a Potter fan <laughs> at all. I've read, I've read all the books and seen all the movies, but it's been since 2011 since I've read the books, because I think that's when the last movie came out. So like, I'm just not as up-to-date or fluent as you guys are? See, so this is my problem, because Kat and I, whenever we're in a car, are listening to audiobooks, and guess what our only audiobooks we listen to are? <laughs> They're Harry Potter. Yeah. I, I just wish, I wish it would have been all as dark as the last couple books. Um, I think that would have maybe I'm just, maybe I just like the darkness of, like, say, Lord of the Rings. Like, I like that type of mythos and that history and that story where someone has already taken over the world and it's trying to rebuild and he's coming back. I like the premise of like a true threat. A true threat. And yeah. I never felt Voldemort, yes, I know what he can do. I know the magic possibilities he can do. I just never felt that. Th I felt like the um, um, shit. The, not the Deathbringers, but the um, Death Eaters. Death Eaters. They're more of a threat. Than Voldemort. Oh, certainly, because they're all like zealous, like followers of like some ridiculous right wing conspiracy. There's like a cult that actually was to, to controlling the entire like government that Harry Potter world had, and that the that, Ministry of Magic. Yeah, I felt like that was more of a threat than the the main villain. So the interesting thing is, like, I think the books really take off at, at the end of Goblet when he actually is resurrected and he becomes like up to that point, he's like this. So spoken about in dark shit corners, not really like he's trying to come back, but man, he's just taking over nerdy people's heads right. and like eating unicorn blood and or shit. The back of the head, yeah. Of like, but then he's like fully resurrected, and he's like for the all of like Order of the Phoenix, he's hiding in the shadows, and nobody believes that he's back. His best, most powerful ability was that nobody really believed Harry Potter or Dumbledore, right? And then of course they get outed, and then shit hits really hits the fan, and they just. Flat out, just do a coup and take and over the I ministry. Think another one of my problems is is we don't get a lot of Voldemort in his prime. That's before, the, that's what you get from right. Half Blood Prince memories. Memories, like, yes. you see what the job he took after he left Hogwarts. You see how he became like uh, how he gathered Death Eaters to his power. You see how he started making his Horcruxes and shit, and how he actually found these ancient like artifacts and, that, and then used them. And that that series. If you change this whole series around, give me a series on Voldemort. I'd watch those movies. I'd watch those movies. I would read those books, and I would like that better. Yeah, I, I, even I, if I know he, in the end he's gonna die, sure. whatever, I'm fine with it. There's a lot of good story that's left out of those movies, and that'd be really. And that's good. my problem. Is every every good story has has the villains and his backstory. Star Wars, you know where Darth Vader comes from. You know who he was. You know his path. 
Well, I mean, so the biggest thing about Voldemort that nobody really realizes unless they read the books is that he, um, his mother, uh, used a love potion on his muggle father. Yep. Yeah. And he was conceived and born under the effects of love potion, which in, in turn made him incapable of feeling love. So he's like a, so he's a, uh, and that's know, another fan theory. Unempathetic. That, that's why he's so. Just fucked up the way he is. Right. He can't ever truly understand other people. Right. All right. Which is why he hates Harry Potter so much, is because he is the definition of love. Sure. All right. All right so- now that we've talked 40 minutes about Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. It's Harry fucking Potter. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. I'm sorry. God damn. Did you want to do your list? Hold on a second. You got to understand it's a book. No, you still Andy got another one to read. go. Do you want to do your list? You got to. You can still win so I'm saying I can one. stop right now. You don't get no. your two years now. Mm hmm. <laughs> Fucking grandpa can't even read. What's your number one, Andy? <laughs> or not? Sorry, Sweeney. What's your number one? So my number one, uh, I think Tim will agree a little bit with me because he hates this movie. Aliens. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I don't. Fuck you. I don't, Aliens is awesome. I don't get. I, I understand it's a celestial threat and it's an alien and it was made back in a time when that that was a fear among a lot of the audience. It's not but why even is that, it so man. fucking popular? Xenomorphs are bad touch, man. Yeah, dude. Well, it is, it, it, it is about inappropriate sexual That's why they were created. Uh, Whoever attacks. designed them was essentially a phallic symbol for rape. Yeah, that's, that's what that face huggers well. are. That was it. They did it very well. H.R. Geiger, man. Yeah, that shit is like dark and, yep. and frightening. Yeah, the look of them are cool, but I... I don't get the fan base. I just don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, it's really not that big of a fan base. The first base. two it's movies are cool. After that, I couldn't... Well, yeah, well. Alien and Aliens are amazeballs film, but Free and Resurrection and Covenant and, everyone, and Prometheus, these weren't good. Movies. And everyone loves like Sigourney Weaver and the suit. She fights the alien. Get I away from her, you bitch. Hey, cool. She's yeah. a great female cool moment, yeah. like um, hero. It's awesome. Yeah. For like, what, five minutes? How how people like feel about clowns, how they get like creeped out by clowns, I get creeped out by the xenomorph. It's just, Look, I, man. Can't, I can't watch a movie because of it. So the thing, the thing that makes Alien and Aliens amazing films is they're one of the first sci-fi cinematic tropes with a strong female lead. That's and really and where I it takes place. That. That's, that's, that's its gift to history. It doesn't make it worthy of everyone's praise. All right. You know what? I'm so exhausted that I can't even fight with you on this one. I like Alien. I like Aliens. I don't like the other movies you're and they kept, and It's none of the series that they just kept going with that they didn't need to do it. I, I and they do it with horror films all the time. The problem is, is they don't do the damn the damn first two movies justice, and they keep making bad sequels. When all it really takes to do a decent alien film is that isolation and claustrophobia like in space. It needs to be a horror yeah. film yeah. again, not fucking not, not sought by action. Not yeah. yes, not action. It needs to be it's a like, horror film. It's like the first Predator. All right, great movie. Yeah. Premise out in the jungle, something randomly, something's randomly hunting everybody down. It's a thriller. Everyone's confused. Then you get the final battle scene done. It Why the great. fuck do they need to keep making those movies? Predator Two with Danny Glover is good. It's, it's an underappreciated sci-fi sequel. I, I like can understand it. that. Danny Glover is a great actor, and they, that movie had a. It's a. It was an urban King jungle. Willy. It was an urban jungle instead of the actual jungle. And then I, you get into this whole premise that they they are related to the aliens and they hunt aliens, and that's their whole premise. Is to go hunting. Uh, I got a I got a buddy of mine I used to work with. Um, his name's Mike, and he's a huge Aliens fan. Huge Aliens fan, and even he did not like Covenant. And I recently was able to watch Covenant, and this movie pretty much ruined the the history. Well, then you get Prometheus too, where the whole premise is these are the perfect beings, and that's how they were created. Not and that all, good. And, oh my god, why? Like if it dies by a flamethrower, it ain't that fucking right, perfect. Leave it at the first one if you're gonna do it. You're secluded. You're on a space station. You're getting attacked by aliens. It's scary as hell for everybody. Done. I think Alien has so much potential, but it just hasn't been done justice. And fans of the the series have just they they see what they want to see because it's there. It can it can be there, but it's not being delivered by production. They, Alien Two, like they made it bigger and better, and then like because that's what you're supposed to do with the Queen scene. Alien. But they never like the rest of the franchise has not. Yeah, yeah, has not. Well, not three no, literally has, took a no, step back. Just, no, has just stayed on it to where it needs to be like one woman, one person, one alien. That's Even. the problem. If that's the problem too, is everybody's holding on to that one film or two films mm-hmm. from the beginning, and they think, oh, it's still so great. 
No, go I like back Florida and rewatch Marines. these movies. You know what I mean? Like Space Marines are fucking awesome. Starship Troopers, Space Marines are awesome. It's just a great concept. Two, like the the personalities in the Space Marines makes the second movie. I just I think people are still holding on to an old thought, an old an old movie, and they think it was so great back then because it was nostalgic for them. I can't they really can't. dismiss the first two films because the sequels are bad. They were good movies. That does not make the whole franchise shit. No. It makes the majority of the franchise shit. I think a lot of people still hold on to the image of what they saw back then and not really what happened. And not and not they're 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 evaluating Covenant with what they remember from two or Oh, you think people are using rose tinted glasses to like, like really the out, out, if they are they're wrong. Right. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. No, yeah, if they're doing that, then I totally disagree with them. I love the first two films, but you have to objectively admit that the, the, all the following films, including the Alien vs. Predator films, are fucking terrible. Yeah. Requiem had some good parts. Eh, I think those movies were just like, they were like, well, we need to have these two superior beings go at it because everyone's arguing about who would win. And that's the way they made the movie. Whoever wins, we lose. Right. Mm-hmm. It's so stupid. It's like, right. Aliens, cool. Face are cool. Yeah, rape, not so cool, but yeah. in the movie, Face hugger, rape especially. Yeah, in the movie, good concept, like the concept, piss poor execution throughout. But you know what it did give us a really awesome joke in Spaceballs. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon. Not again. Hello, not again. Not again. Oh. Yes. How do you know it's Pluto from the bark? You dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we just went through all, all the way through Spaceballs. Yeah, we sure yeah, did. The end. The end. <laughs> all, all right, Andy, you can finally talk. Andy, uh, what's what's the theme of your top five? All right, so when we started to discuss this, our topic, we said let's do overrated pop culture stuff. So I took that literal and I did more like a like a wait, cornucopia. Wait. A was nothing I did pop culture. No, uh, did I, I say it wasn't? <laughs> It's, so I said, what do I find overrated to me in all of pop culture? So my list is a little mix of, in no particular order, here's five pop culture stuff. Fuck it. Thanks, Rando Calrissian. This will be there great. So what he's trying to say is he just threw some shit together. <laughs> Good job, you lazy fuck. What's your, phone? What's, your, what's your number five? Number five? I hate musicals. <laughs> I think we've discussed this on a podcast. We have we discussed thought, this I mean, before. But yeah. he's right. He hates musicals. I hate musicals. And we've discussed why I'm not a fan of the show Toonie, where all of a sudden the, the film has to stop its progress so we can now have a two to five minute music and dance <laughs> montage to what they were currently you just no talking soul. about. You've never professed your love to music? No. You were in band, you geek. I like music. <laughs> I like films. Wait, wait, wait. Don't have to mash them together. Did you like Team America? That's a musical. It's okay. <laughs> it's funny. Mm. But I'm not I sitting here. Like, I do not I, own any South musical Park, soundtrack. Whoa, 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 we didn't, we're not saying you have to own a soundtrack. No, I but I'm just saying, just like, like I it always, wasn't the music that made me like it. I'm trying, I've always been trying to find the fine line of what <laughs> was. Yeah. We, is you? Because I think I feel like your definition of musical is because straddling no, opera no, no, and no, musical. So we're Grease. Not, be, be, be you don't like Grease? Grease? Okay. No, because Grease and Hairspray are musicals. I don't consider, even though they have music in them, I don't consider Team America or South Park musicals. I don't. Why? They're comedy. South Park is a musical. That's a, you could have a comedic musical. Hairspray is a comedic musical. Grease has a funny and it's on a, the Grease isn't a full on comedy, but you can have a comedic musical. South Park is a musical. The South Trade Parker and, and Matt Stone are guilty of numerous kind musicals. Kind of what sticks in my head is almost those musicals that are either done on film or stage. Like those show tuny, right. the. You think the it's because the cartoon can't be a musical? Like, like, Tell like, them no. like Cats and Wicked or whatever. Ugh. But, but the, the, Cats. They I love have Wicked great music cats, in them. Like a lot of the music from That's those fun is that they have great music. But like, I. It, to me, it just stops the flow of the film. It cheapens it. It's cheesy. It's over the top. And it's just, I don't need it. I don't need a five-minute song of them being like, we're going to go get in a fight. We're going to shoot and punch people in the face. I want to watch this movie. <laughs> what fucking musical are you what watching? Musical that? <laughs> Musicals in my head that I would watch. That's what, amazing, though. What is TV version of West Side Story? <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about like a... <laughs> he like he like he like I think he made Warriors into a musical. I watched the shit out of that. <laughs> Evil Dead's a musical. I loved Warriors it. Warriors come out I mean, to I play. Get, <laughs> I get they have Can cultural impact. 
I get they have significance. But they have- I get singing in the rain. I get, no, even don't. though I don't enjoy it, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nah. Like, it's cult classics. And- I get it. It's just not for me. Why, I don't though? want to sit there Did you hate and Lion have King? my movie sung to me. Why? What's it's it matter? It's not the whole damn film. You're talking about operas. But it's the majority. But why of does it. it matter? Why 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 does it matter if they're acting no, or singing? I can tell you not opera. I I won't watch an opera. Why does it matter if they're acting or singing? What's the difference? Like it's just still fucking acted out. I want to see something like I go to the films to watch a normal beginning to end film without people having Musicals to break are some into of the first fucking, fucking films ever made. Once sound and film hit together, we were making music. And the human the beings first, make music. And I want to go back the in first, time and find the person the that first, did that and be like, the first, no. The first music or the first movie with sound is called The Jazz Singer. <laughs> the first movie of color was Wizard of Oz. Holy shit, yeah, dude. That is a legit musical. And you tried to argue earlier that it wasn't. I, I was like, what it. music do they have in the house? Uh, oh my yeah. god, dude. Somewhere <laughs> over the rainbow, every song sung by the Cowering Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow. Yeah. Even the damn wizard has a song. If I only had a brain. If you only knew what you were talking about. They are integral parts to the movie. They're not like just doing it for like whimsical fun. It Life actually makes would sense. would be better if Andy wasn't a bed wetter suck yes. my balls. <laughs> but I don't need those songs in there. I don't need them. Mm, well, I did. So you want a boring life of just dialogue? Sure. No, I live a musical life and I need music in my life. How much, if I want music, I'll listen How to many, classical music. Andy, I'll you. listen to rock. I'll listen Andy, to I'll you, listen to music. You Andy, I don't music need to snob. go into my Andy, films. How and many be like, times Give me a show tune, bitch? How many times in our normal conversation does a song come up and we start singing it? I'd sing at least three times a day. Hell, like, you yeah. always bring up that damn Drake song every five minutes. Oh god, hey, you like Drake? He is working at a call center what in the about, basement. What about, what He's about, getting blown up. What about? What about? I feel bad for this. What are you saying? What's that? What's that one Poor Jimmy. Booty, booty in your face that you always fucking sing every? But I'm not like going to matter. a strip club like booty in the. I am not. You I would though. No. Fucking I am. You would if life. we wanted to like, a strip club. We're going to the car to go get some tacos. Go That's bell. not. You've done that no really we fucking go. musical in go the history of musicals tacos. has just You've seen what that. they were doing. You've literally done that. Actually, that song you're just saying like wanted to get tacos. You've done that. Even so, Greece didn't do that. Yeah. So, so so does like a sitcom piss you off when like oh, yeah, I'll be there like, for you starts playing when you watch a rerun of Friends? I, I've Friends. watched many Buffy the Vampire <laughs> the, Slayer episodes. Guess which one I haven't watched? The musical. The musical. It's one. one of the most beloved Buffy episodes in the whole series. Don't want to watch it. Oh my fucking lord! Who <laughs> Flash? Didn't they just have a musical one yeah, with him I, and yeah, Supergirl? Yeah. Won't watch it. All right, you, this is probably going to be edited, but you're a tasteless sex offender. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you better stay in the fucking episode. You are a tasteless sex <laughs> like, offender. Like seriously, like. You're you're naming bad, bad examples of musicals. Yeah, you're not even like really like. Freaking. So okay, ignore the stuff you don't like because that's invalid. No, no, you're naming bad musicals like the fucking Flash episode. Who gives a shit about that? I don't yeah. care about that. Like Phantom of the Opera, amazing. That's also an opera. That's though. an opera. No, it's they have dialogue in it as well. It's still a musical. When they sing the dialogue in Phantom, it's a not play. Always. It's more of a play that the, got the, made. In you don't know movie. the difference between a play and, and musical. You do when you have no definitions. Here we go. Play, no singing. All, all acting. That's true. Okay. Musical, singing, and, and acting. acting. And dialogue. Opera, all okay. singing. A stage show. But that's no, not, that's, that's not, not on the list. He gave you three fucking options. He gave you three options. You have to use the three options. And the fourth one's a ballet, which is no no talking, no singing, all music, just dancing. Yeah. Those are, those, those, are the the four, those are the four, those types, the four types. These are all stage and, productions. Yeah, and, yeah, they're all four stage shows. And guess what? Film can be any one of these. Movies can do all of it. What I'm saying is, you've named bad examples. The Flash I've episode. named good ones. No. I've nope. named Singing in the Rain. Yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying... What Rocky saying. Horror Picture Show. Okay. What I'm saying is, the last ones you just hated on were bad examples. I think that you think that everyone's just going to think Flash. you're an effeminate pussy for liking a musical, and it's okay. You can no, like musicals. I like going to the, to the fucking... Uh, like Just, listening to orchestras. I like listening to classic music. Oh, I that's like, fucking lame. Okay. <laughs> There's not even singing. There's not even singing. That's boring as fuck. There's so a bunch I, of douchebags uh, blowing so wind. Like Symphony Number no. 9 would disagree with you, and that's probably the greatest music ever written. I'm so bored right now. I so, can't even fucking so think you, about you, it. You, oh, let's talk about uncultural fucks. If you're like, I don't like Beethoven classical. bores me, you are completely... So, all so I can here. say is that it was, I could see that Mozart was in fact deaf. 
So here's it the argument then. If you can that appreciate was actually a Beethoven, not Mozart. They can both suck my balls. If you can appreciate good classical music for what it is, for the power behind the music, why can't you appreciate a good musical that has like powerful it. music? It's why? Not, I don't like musicals and film. I that's not what I want to watch a movie. I just don't. I don't like it. Everyone has a taste. That is not mine. Did you like South Park? Bigger, longer. It was uncut. funny. Okay. Do I own it? No. Have I watched it since it came out? No. I own it on Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I hate you. Keep going. What's number four? four. Turn-based RPG video games. Go fuck yourself, and dude. And that includes Final Fantasy. No, fuck you, man. Overrated. I've explained this to you before. Turn-based RPGs were an, or a look, man. It was because of problems in the technology. Action-based RPGs did not take presence till the late 90s when the PlayStation 2 and those systems existed to make an action-based role-playing game an, an actual possibility. Back in that time frame, RPGs are based entirely on statistics, numbers, and probability. Turn-based was the only way the graphics and the systems could actually make a game like that an option. You're hating something because of the lack of technology of the time frame to make it what you think it should have been. I'm not full on hating it. I'm Chrono saying it's Trigger, overrated. Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy III, the, Secret of Mana. The love that people have for these and the pedestal that they put them up on, including Final Fantasy VII, which I like because of the story. Like but the gameplay, I don't like. Like don't again, it's, it's something that. For your turn. Yeah, like, you don't like. You, you get, you're impatient. Exactly. You're, you're like, in the mindset of a nine year old. I don't I want to wait for your turn. I want to be attack. able to go up and fight. I don't want to be like, all right, the story that is actually good. They're really now, good. Pause. Okay, I'm fighting this. All right, group member number one, uh, do this potion. Okay, you're going to do this when this happens. He has to read. You're going to do this. No, this is not even <laughs> so reading. Like, this so is okay. Now, character number two, um, I'm strategy. going to need you to do it this. Is a strategy. And, and now go. It's strategy for cool. picking. All right, number one, you're going to do like it's so. Let's go. So let's go back to the most meticulous. primitive, primitive form. Oh, God forbid, something be meticulous. Pokemon. Pokemon was turn, turn based strategy. Turn based. Game. And have I played Pokemon? Yes. You literally go out and hunt Pokemon all the time. You literally do. You play Pokemon Go still. You're like the one person no. still playing Pokemon Andy, do Go. Do I play Pokemon Go? You no. did for a she long nodded. time. She nodded. So I did saw you. It. Yeah, not. Yeah, we like Pokemon. <laughs> I'm not throwing sort out of, our arguments. Not to defend. My point is, is that you're saying you don't like something that you play. Right. That is turn based. You throw a ball. The ball goes onto the thing. Get to wait and see what happens. That was that collector mentality. I mean, cool. Collect them all. Cool. Still turn based. <laughs> this is like if you, if you this is like that, arguing. His girlfriend said, "Oh my god!" <laughs> this is like arguing with a lobotomized Tea Party member. <laughs> it was just they are not. You said Chrono Trigger was a bad game, and I punched you for it. It was a boring game. Fuck you. Oh, Chrono, yeah. Chrono Trigger is I play yearly at least once. Chrono Trigger is a classic. It is one of the greatest turn based RPGs ever made, and to this day, the art is beautiful. The story is fantastic. Hey, they're the remaking characters are Final great. Fantasy Seven. Well, I play it. They're also Chrono Remaking Blade. Secret of Mana, and I'm super Am excited for that. No. They're also remaking Dot Hack GU, which the is new, a game you never played. The new Final uh, Fantasy actually is not turn based. It's, it's going to be action, it's based. Be yeah, action okay, based. And I'll love it even more then. Oh, fuck you. The whole premise behind turn based, was like Phil said, is it, get, it allowed you to have battles greater than the equipment you were playing on. And that's fine. No, apparently it's not. Cool for the time it was. But yeah, they are. They are not you like everyone would hold them up like these are the holy grail video games. Wrong, At dude. Time, they're like the fucking have? first Ford Mustang that ever came out. They, these are cla they are classic cars. Those are classic games. These are games that invented a genre. You love World of Warcraft. Don't even lie. You played the shit out of it. We all did. You played Star Wars: The Old Republic. You have played a fuck ton of MMORPGs. Yeah. Newsflash, bro. You would have none of those without these turn-based RPGs. You think are overrated, but they became you can better. Suck the the Kira Toriyama. Those are better. That, that, make, that does not make these games overrated. Term based because the technology got better does not overrated. mean that, that because technology got better does not mean what we had at the time was overrated. Yeah, that's wrong. Overrated. You hate it because it's nostalgic like, and you don't understand that's it. That's like, no, the can, nostalgic part is what I like. The you story hate having to read dialogue. Sephiroth, villain, awesome. Sephiroth, great. Cool. Yeah, it was kind of edgy for me, but whatever. Music, awesome, cool. <laughs> hey, look, music. They I had an orchestral it. A soundtrack yeah, so for that. The 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 mechanic of combat 
You didn't like going through lists and reading your abilities and selecting what you wanted to do at any time. You didn't like it just strategy. Slowed it you wanted to button mash. No, it just slowed it down. Don't lie to me. Down. You wanted to button mash. I'm like, let me just it's pull like, out this big fucking bastard sword and go up and start. It. It's called a buster sword. That's like saying because penicillin was developed on mold, now that we can develop it in labs, that is overrated. Mold was super overrated. It was, <laughs> but it still worked, right? Sure does. For the time, it was. It helped our country be not go into um, the plague. And Dude, get- I don't know about you, but I think Bath and Body Works hand soaps are super awesome, but that makes regular bar soap mega overrated. Bar, so- f- bar soap me- is overrated. No, it's not you. <laughs> it still serves a purpose. Who uses bar soap anymore? Me! I have a bar upstairs. Gross. It's covered in pubes. I don't... Oh, my God. <laughs> You're covered in pubes. All right, let's go on, because I'm, I'm ready no, to get... just go on. No, I'm ready to get the one that we're going to agree on. We're not going to agree on I hate you right now. Like, I don't like your face. All right, I, I kind of want to rearrange it. This episode, actually. Yeah. Just hit it. The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, we do agree on this. Yeah, episode. yeah, right, yeah. And The Walking Dead, I actually, like, I was one of those people who loved it. Loved the show. You are hardcore for a while. For day one. Until this most recent season. It was predictable. Just this most recent season? Yeah, it was predictable. Well, actually, season two was the one where everyone was kind of like... I haven't right. watched Walking Dead since season two. Just fucking no, the little got, girl. It got better after season two. Yeah, It did not. And then it's... Because it I, I went back and watched it, and it didn't, because Terminal was stupid. The uh, Ser- Terminus? Okay. Ser- yeah, Terminus. Terminus was stupid. Terminal. Searching for Sophie <laughs> in the Woods. Movie. Yeah, Searching the Sophie for Sophie in the Woods for the entire season was stupid. The barn was cool. But only because they yeah, Christ the farm we found was cool. Sophia. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the the barn was cool because that was a unique. Because nobody looked in the fucking barn to see a child the zombie the, for the whole time. Season. Oh my god! It's the one place you didn't look. And you talking about the fucking parents? Fucking Carl. Carl. Get him like fucking Carl. on a real leash parents. or something. Like, god parents. damn it, Carl. 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 The show starts unique setting, unique like it was. It was awesome the way it started. Nice, short, and sweet. It was what six episodes? Season yeah, one. This is season two. The barn. Like the farm, awesome, cool. Three, the prison, something now new. Now the humans start to become more of the threat instead of the zombies. So you're still unique. You still got a cool storyline going here. The governor, Phil. Now it's Governor 2.0. That's meaner. Negan's just oh, humans are still bad. I, I, in the comic, they I like Negan. He's got a foul mouth, and I appreciate him. They go to another sanctuary city. Yeah, it's going to fall. They go to another one. It the show is now repeating itself. It's given us the this same is- stories. It's predictable. You know who's going to die. They end with that cliffhanger last season, and everyone's like, it's going to be Glenn. Glenn's one of the ones that's going to die. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's literally not. the comic not book, him. people. Yeah. Yeah. Read and the same source off. material. Ma- Ma- if you truly Ma- love something, Maggie. you read its origins. <laughs> yeah. ma- 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 Maggie. Maggie. Look, man. Good thing you say Marsha. Eyeball Marcia. hanging out and everything. <laughs> Martha. Martha. Why did you say that name? But then it was just, this is another example of what I talked about earlier where they try to just up themselves, the gore factor, and they try to make things like, oh, let's see what we can do with these zombies, and they look good with these zombies. They're trying to make it look better and better. And like, it's the story still sucks. Every Watch. show that has lasted or le- the test of time, they've ended when it's been at on the top. top. Yeah. Game of Thrones is going to end while it's on top. Look, dude, the comic is unreadable right now. The Walking oh, the Dead has been good for like. Hundred issues. This, this should have been the final season of The Walking Dead. Probably the last. I, I think they should have ended it when they got to DC. Yeah, I think they should have ended it with season one. I don't know about that. <laughs> look, man, I, 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 I get where you're coming from. This is a show that, and it's even its source material has gone on for too long. It's time to pull the plug on Walking Dead. It hasn't been. I, I don't. I don't. Do you give a shit about zombies anymore? No. I mean, don't be wrong. I read the zombie had the high handbook, and I read okay. uh, uh, his World War Z. But I'm, the I'm zombie kinda, genre is... I'm kind of over it. The zombie apocalypse never yeah, came. I'm, I prepared for nothing. I'm over Walking Dead. Like the only like bright part of last season was I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed uh, Negan. Now, Jeffrey Dean Morgan Jeffrey is Dean a great Morgan actor, and he portrays it. It just didn't feel new. Yeah, I think they waited too long to bring Negan in. And they also the sad part, see that. the core group that you get from season one and two that everyone starts to come together. They've always had this survivability because most of them have shown some kind of smart decision making or they've done something correct. They are so street stupid now in this show. Awesome. Like, they make terrible decisions. Like, they do stupid stuff. Putting Rick and Michonne together on the show just does not. Well, feel they right. killed off his fucking love interest in the comic book. Like, like uh, 
Andrea. Andrea is supposed to still be alive in the comic, and they killed her in the damn show. Third season. And the guy. And the, spoilers. And now, and now, I'm sorry, I don't give a shit about spoilers because you should you should just quit this anyway. Yeah. But the, in the comic book, Rick and Michonne are getting together. Now the comics copy in the Not show. Comic. Oh yeah, man. Have you read the most recent issues? No, no, I think maybe I'm an issue behind. All right, well, I'm, I'm I'm caught up, and let me tell you, they're um they're pushing towards that. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's super. I'm I'm fucking done with The Walking Dead. Yeah. And you know what? It was really big I for was, its time. The comic and the show for, needs to. But it's no game for us. I think four, there's about three or four years that our Walking Dead was huge. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, but it's the no comics game of themselves are even starting to come back down in value, just because I think everyone's finally. It was a fun, fun event. It, it was. was. Let's and I feel like the first season you felt the threat. You felt like he was like the last person. This was the last group, and this was like it. Even though. Realistically, you're going to have little pop-ups of populations, but you felt like this is, this was it. The like, zombies were threatening. So, yeah, where now they're just background characters. Now they're background the characters. I honestly swear to God, when they killed Shane, that should have been an end of the show. I mean, that would have been a good yeah. place. For the, no, I know the comic. Like, that's the, like the that's like I know the first trade. But, I, but yeah. I mean, I mean, for this series on TV, if they would have stopped it there. And then came back when it got popular. If people wanted more, wanted more, then it would have picked up again. I feel like they just overstimulated their audience. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so speaking of Frank Darabont's shit, um, The Mist, the TSV comedy TV show, and Frank oh, Darabont did The God. Mist movie. The Mist movie and the book are awesome. I know, but it's like... Is Frank again. Darabont involved in the television show? I don't think so. Oh, then fuck it. I think, I, think, right, I think he's too busy suing AMC right now. Yeah, oh, good. So Hope the gets producers, yeah. the current producers and Frank... They're suing AMC because of contract uh, issues, and AMC apparently is there's, taking... Yeah, there's two different lawsuits going yeah, on. Yeah, a little money the money issues and everything, so the rumors are that Amazon streaming service is trying to woo The Walking Dead, so this show does not have yeah, much longer. Like, like I, read, I read an article where um, like Frank Darabont is suing them for completely different reasons, but like the, produ- the current producers and even... Um, uh, Robert Kirkman are suing AMC right now because of the way that they that AMC like does their money that are like and and um uh, advertising for the show that they're not getting the advertising money and it could be close like potentially close to a billion dollar lawsuit. Get the f- what? Ooh. Kirkman's about to be Oprah rich. That's oh, why. That's why. Um, Kirkman Skybound Studios signed a deal with AM, but he moved from AM, AMC to Amazon for like. Well, you know when stuff like the that. creators and the writers and everybody's yep. jumping ship and suing the production company, um, the show's done. Like, yeah. just, stop. just stop. It has something to do with because AMC, like, also like they they produce the show on their own. It's like something to do with the mo- the funneling of money for advertising and for the production that is that they're supposed to get that they're not that they don't perceive. That they're, they're probably just like you guys are ruining this. Let's just get out. <laughs> Cool. Well, right. we'll, we'll right. have to watch that swan song. Well, well back you. to you guys hating me. Um, <laughs> yep. Number two on my list is the television show and animated comedy of Archer. Fuck you. Oh, yep. man. No. You know what? I hope you get chlamydia. I just, I can't. It's so funny. It, it's I not. It it's is. one of the oh, greatest God. animated shows. It's it is not funny. funny. It is funny. It's, Why do you think it's not funny? I just, I don't laugh. I don't. I know. I, you don't have a sense of humor. He, he doesn't get sarcasm. He doesn't get the sarcasm. <laughs> what is sarcasm. this thing? It's this magical thing that was created. And the way that they create... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> the way that they create like all these characters where they're all just so flippant with each other. Like, I just... There's, there's no there's chemistry. Other, there's what? no... I no mean, chemistry. Right. It's the show is pure chemistry. Everybody has chemistry. On that uh, show. Every act, every voice actor and character in Archer has amazing. They all have a different re- relationship with oh, each other. I just couldn't get into it, and it's kind of like you with the Bob's Burgers. There's like, I just, no, I it's can't. Not. It's nothing alike. It is. <laughs> and, nothing and I will alike. use this. They I will use nothing. this excuse because I did see Bob's Burgers first, and I like Bob's Burgers. So then, when I watched Archer and I hear the exact same voice, I was just like. I would rather be watching Bob's Burgers. Oh my god! This is just proof. Said nobody ever. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so all you've done is given me like hard, concrete evidence that anything that comes out of your mouth is fucking retarded. <laughs> because you just told me hey, you like Bob's. That word. I'm sorry, retarded. <laughs> you just told me that you like Bob's Burgers more than Archer. You yeah. literally have brain damage. No. Yes. On Bob's Burgers, none of them have 
any chemistry whatsoever. It's all about dumb kids and parents that know what the fuck they're doing. Archer's funny as hell, man. It's got like alcoholism and like glue sniffing and Pam Poovy with her dolphin puppet and Krieger, this clone of Hitler scientist doing clones That's and shit. That's always like fucking doing the weirdest fucking experiments. Mallory Archer and Sterling Archer and their rampant over the top alcoholism and the mommy issues and 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 Lana Kane like oh my god in Danger Zone no Archer is a fucking work of art and every season has been good uh, yeah uh, absolutely. every season's been there has awesome. not been a bad episode they're all bad I'm usually no, a hateful not. person oh I'm a pretty hateful person but no I'm gonna say this was something fucking, you cannot hate on they fucking got Kenny Loggins to come on the show just to do Danger Zone it's this show is amazing. You, for none of this is making me want to be like, tell me to go watch Next this. year you're going to tell me you don't like Danger Zone. The song. <sighs> From Top Gun? Barry the Cyborg. Freaking KGB. Did he have to just say From Top Gun? Yes, he did. So it was in Top Gun. Gun. Oh my God. God. It's, because, it's because you don't like what your number one is. And my number one. <laughs> Wait, we can just skip. No, you know, can we, can they, we just... We can. But to be fair, they kind of... They, they, kind they, of, they go hand in hand. We'll just close the file on Archer and say you're an asshole. <laughs> and well, that's fine. Go hand it's hand. just that's not for me. Well, apparently... Again, this, is, this was overrated to us. Like, it, uh, I'm not saying it's some big well, steaming pile of shit. I would just shit. like to encourage all of our listeners to please... I just don't think please. it's as good as what everyone is hyping it up. If you're an Archer fan, and I'm pretty sure you are, if you have a heartbeat and an IQ of about 12, <laughs> I'd like you to message us on our Instagram and our Facebook and please just remind Andy that you know where he lives because I'm going to give you his address. <laughs> anyway, what's your number one? Hey, if I get shit for BoJack Horseman, you can get shit for Archer. It's so true. Because BoJack Horseman sucks also. The, yeah, that Whoa. was awful. Archer's not anywhere near BoJack Horseman. I'm staying super neutral on these. <laughs> I'm, on the BoJacks, I'm not going to get involved in that argument. You don't like it either. All right. <laughs> number one is another spy, and it's James Bond. Like, or so are we talking about all of the all James Bond films? We're talking about Connery, Lazenby, uh, more, more James Bond, all, all James, the all characters. James yeah. Bond, James Bond, the character. I mean, and mostly because the the films they do there there's cultural impact. There are actually some good films for it. The character James Bond is a shitty, shitty spy. That doesn't make any sense because you like that man. Yeah, dude. Y'all, y'all can't Batman's not a fucking spy. Uh, He's the same fucking person. No, he is not. He might as well be a secret Are you agent. actually literally trying to tell me that James yes. Bond and Batman are the same character? They are intelligent. That is fucking retarded. They're intelligent. One is just a furry they and are, not a pedophile and the other one's they not. They are rich. They go to big parties. The other one fucks up. a bunch of women and then just lets them die. Well, yeah, why not? <laughs> and and, and, and Batman didn't do that. Yeah, dude, yeah Batman, exactly. Batman, 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 Batman literally does exactly. No, his, his women are usually trying to kill him. Look, yo, man, I'm just saying, right. like, that's how like, James Bond avoids like commitment. That, that this is never banged a woman named Pussy Galore. This is a spy who uses his fucking real name all the Excuse time. Me. He's a gentleman spy. <laughs> Hey, hey, Bond. hey, hey are you sure Bond. that's his real hey, name? I'm James Bond. Even I, if it's not, he uses the same name. So can I can I put this the, out there? There's a theory that all of the James Bonds that we've seen on film and in books aren't actually the same James Bond. That James Bond 007 is actually an undercover secret agent title. And whoever takes on the role of 007 in MI6 is the and new so James Bond. So he sits down in front of someone, he's like, I'm Bond, I'm James Bond. Cool, okay. Hey, who are you? Bond, James Bond. They're right, not alive Bond, at the same James time. Bond. A new a Bond, Bond doesn't happen until one dies. Says his name. Know, like a 007 operative like becomes a double like becomes an operative when but if you're a dies. spy and you're undercover you're going to have a different he's never day. undercover yeah he really everyone isn't. knows really? who what he is what are you talking about every there's movie he knows of, who he there's is there's an actual picture i think it is a dalton which one was it where he plays a japanese man that's well, sean that's connery and that's you only look that's twice. only lived twice yes. so don't tell me he Bird doesn't go undercover Ashton but, all, everyone, and, and, and but he also did not didn't go under James Bond when he was in really terrible Asian makeup. <laughs> yeah, when he tried to pretend to be Japanese. Yeah, or yeah, no, yeah, he, get, I mean, he had a okay, fake I'm sorry, the name. one example. My bad. Um, most of the time, everybody knows in the room who James Bond is, and they went, they always try to kill him anyway. He's, he's constantly oh, blowing his Everybody cover. knows that James Bond is a Dr. spy, Dr. No, though. Goldfinger, Thunderball, just his what? cover's blown every time. That's the whole part of the movie. Yeah, man. Like it wouldn't be any fun if it's covered. If it's a spy blown. movie and your cars get blown, who the fuck cares? He's not like a legit CIA agent who's constantly actually not trying to let anyone know he's a spy. He wants to get drunk and bang bitches and play backrack. That's James Bond, bro. 
And he wants awesome fucking gadgets. And he wants his car to shoot oil slicks and spikes out of he his butthole. So also, like, also and again, Batman about, reference. Gadgets. Also, like we're we're talking about in an era of like except the except the um Daniel Craig movies, where like there's no like really like there's no continuity. There's no it's just it's a story. It's they're by themselves. He himself is an overrated character. Uh, mm. I don't well, think he is. Get, get, I think I, he serves exact purpose. I he was think you for. are a a a nit a nitpicking. Uh, we know he's nitpicking because the fucking Aries. Yeah. The, so here's my point: is yeah, I'm with Sweeney on this. You can't like Batman and everything you love about Batman. Guess what? Oh, there's a lot of James Bond in Batman. So if you hate James Bond, you have to hate a lot of shit about Batman. I know you love Batman. So all right, all <laughs> I hear, wait, no, so wait, all I hear right always now, says his name for everybody. All I hear right now is blah blah blah. Rich, I'm trying to pick a fight. Parties, blah blah. Fuck me. Women. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of similarities. That's like. All of them. Batman showed up in his cowl and came going, Wade, Bruce Wayne. Oh, I mean, Wade, to Batman. I told you, <laughs> Batman is just James Bond but with a fursuit on. No, he is not. They are not the fucking same, period. All you right. cannot even, I mean, again, yeah, if anybody close. out there with an IQ higher right, 12 I mean, thinks they're the same so character, sweet okay. us. So, so, you can get so mad. Let's, let's, you can get mad all you want, but you're fucking wrong. There's still, there's the still, of James Bond where there's not a whole lot of, where there's not a whole lot of computers and stuff, so that's easily, you can easily still go undercover. And then Pierce Brosnan the movies and the Daniel Craig movies were pretty much like, yeah, I'm James Bond, I'm an MI6 He's officer. a shitty and spy. It, and everyone knew it. Shit, there's a literal scene in Spectre Alex where he... Tre- like, he was, he's not going undercover with Alec fucking Trevelyan, 006, in Goldeneye. Sean Bean. Sean Bean. Dead. He died. He died. Yeah. 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 Spoiler. But they know... It's not a spoiler. Sean Bean's cast. He's, they, they know... The and every almost every movie after, like, the 80s, when Bond comes into play, Goldeneye. they know it's Bond. Regardless. Goldeneye. That's just, he's famous. The thing about Bond is that he's such a badass spy that he doesn't matter that he lets his blown. sidekicks like, get but, captured. He lets he the women that he's yeah, saying die. He's never What's had psychic? a sidekick ever. Now you're getting mixed up or with like Batman. His, <laughs> not sidekicks, but his, like, any lets of his, his sidekicks like, fucking, get captured uh, all the time. Like, name it. Like uh, allies or whoever's he helping him. Name, name it. You're, he's every never woman had ally James ever. Bond bangs in a movie is somebody he meets in that movie. Except for like the first two Daniel Craig films. Or some chick he actually maintained a relationship with and then dies. Ish. Ish. That's just of. dead. There's no ever. There, he never has an ally. He never has a. He works alone. A sidekick. It's a woman he meets there, seduces her, bangs her, and then she may or may not be the villain or may or may not die. There's the evil femme fatale, and then there's the 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 girl there's, that's like innocent and that who he's trying to help. There's so like, Anna, hey, James, there's we need you to go start the session. on a talk. Who can kill you with your legs? She does do that. James, we need you Played to go start Jean this Greg. really really serious mission. Now we need you to go. Okay, hold on. I gotta go get my dick wet first. What spy wouldn't do that? Yeah, shit, dude, that's the whole spy. purpose of being a spy. And that's the, the fun thing about the whole Archer. Purpose of being a spy is to get your dick wet, that's, not actually be a spy. That's what Archer's yes. about. That's literally that's, what Archer's that's about. How, so, like, that is why James Bond is saying get your, get your that's D wet. That's 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 Would you know what that like? So, so, <laughs> so, so, so to get the mission done, maybe he has to bang someone. What's it matter? Maybe, why is that a bad thing? Spies use spies I don't, I don't pro- understand why this is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. He's just full of shit. It's, it's a great a thing. Spy. I don't understand your hatred. Who's a good spy? Archer. Like I've read every book. I've read every Ian Fleming book. I have every movie on DVD and Blu-ray. Ian Fleming's early shit's kind of racist. Dude, I would put the shitty Mission Impossible Bond. movies above James Bond. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna piss in your mouth. And on that, that note. Wow. That's not even close. I didn't think it was possible to think you were fucking dumber than you are, but I want to punch you so hard right now. Sweetie, sh- hit him for me. I have a sharp pain in between my eyes right now. Is it a tumor? Because I'm pretty sure I have a tumor now, too. I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor. God damn. I hate your list. I hate your list and I hate you. I want to go home. That is literally the worst number one ever. God damn, dude. Like, I think you're the only person on the face of this earth that thinks James Bond. James Bond's you don't like you James are. Bond because he bangs women. Fuck no, off. No, fuck because he's a terrible spy. Which is so funny because that's why he's he a terrible likes Batman because he doesn't. Oh, damn and he's a terrible spy because he bangs women. Oh, my God. He tells everyone he's a spy. Yep, that was my only oh, reason. Good night, everybody. That was, was word. Literally Those were, we literally just... Oh okay, goodness. you're right. I didn't list off uh, He's got a one, piece of paper, two, folks. three, four of them just on the paper. You didn't. What? Wait, wait, what? What? Four, <laughs> what? Four, what? You can go back and. Four, what? Well, he's and asking you what the four. Well, he's asking four, you what the what? four things you had listed. What were they? Were they just movies you wrote down the titles of? Right. One no. that was listing movies off. Uses his real name. 
like, always, like, constantly like, blown his cover, does so in Dr. No, Goldfinger, Thunderball, oh, gets captured all the time, never seems to be aware of his if surroundings, constantly okay. getting captured, constantly being spied on himself. Oh. A, if he never got captured, what's the point of the fucking movie? Because no one's going to care that a spy always wins. It's good job, good job, Always. 30-minute film. He did terrible okay. spy. Okay. No, that's okay. the whole point. He has to get have some sort of, like, Dr. Um, no gets captured by a fucking tank. You, you're you going to take down a fucking tank? Yeah, dog. Don't you, get captured by the tank. What? What? With the barrel pointed at you, you're Russia, not going anywhere. From Russia, from Russia with love, it is a Russian plot to get him, and he knows it, and he goes into it for for the UK. So he can expose so the villains. Expose, so he can get some top secret Russian, whatever the fuck it is. And I don't, I don't care. That's why you get him on the cover. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a response. It's just overrated. Oh, like you're saying, we're giving like you like with a LeBron Tea Party it's member. It's overrated. Uh, no, you're saying, well, he meant to get captured. Cool. He's still getting captured. Why don't you just finish up with what about her emails and we'll just end the episode? <laughs> oh, my God. You're killing me. Killing me. Uh, yeah. All right. So thanks for everyone for tuning in to our top five. If you stayed that long. If you stayed that long. If you're still here, I'm very proud of you. But yeah, please, like if we miss something or you disagree or you want to join the argument, please, like feel free to post and we'll tell you why you're wrong, too. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Phil. This is Sweeney. I'm Andy. This is Tim. And get the fuck out of here. My head hurts so bad right now. Fuck off.